Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku had the heart to heal part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 2 comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content and live a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist. The author of the story Talkative Liar from AO3. So let's start the video. The sky was dim the dark gray clouds casting layers of shadows over what was once a lovely home. It now laid in a heap of rubble and dust, unrecognizable as any more than shards of wood and stone. A dark figure picked its way through the perimeter of the destruction, scanning carefully and slowly, searching and listening for any signs of life. The idea of finding anyone living was quickly snuffed out when they find blood. A lot of blood as well as the scattered remains of a dog and what were once a number of people. Crouching down, they examined the scene closely, pulling a black glove on and reaching out to pick up one of the chunks of what used to be a human, looking at the ragged, decayed edges of it carefully and then scanning the rest of the destroyed yard. The ground jutted up in jagged shards, much like the house itself, and the grass was brown and withered. A quirk had done this, that much was abundantly clear. However, this didn't seem like a deliberate attack, but instead an accident. A horrible, terrible accident. Reaching into their pocket, the figure pulls out their phone, searching up the residents of this address so they could take stock of the casualties. From the remains that were before them, they could deduce that all of the family was accounted for, but for one. The youngest, a boy of about five. If this was a quirk manifestation, that would explain the uncontrolled destruction that was before them. It didn't seem like the boy was here, and the figure didn't hear or smell any children nearby, not that it was easy to detect anything past the stench of blood and death. Exhaling a breath that smelled of ozone, they flick off of the documents and go to their contacts, pressing a name. Storm Beast reporting, yet it isn't pretty. A cleanup crew is going to be needed. There's at least half a dozen casualties, they say, straightening, a single shaft of light fighting through the clouds glinting off of vibrant green eyes, shot through with purple like lightning. Oh. I don't think this was a deliberate attack. But a team of analysts might feel differently. I'm going to search the area to see if anyone is in need of rescuing. I will, a dial tone quickly follows, and the figure, the man, puts the phone back in his pocket. Closing his eyes, it takes a mere moment of focus for his body to begin to change, the freckles across his face broadening into a half mask of black splotches, ears darkening, also widening and lengthening until they resembled a bat's, his hands and arms as far as his elbows turning nearly black, his nails becoming black talons. Out of his back, out of a space granted by his costume, which was open against his shoulder blades, two massive leathery wings sprout, and a tail appears from the top hem of his pants, long and powerful with a set of tail fins on either side to allow precise direction changes when flying. Stretching his wings and rolling his neck, he crouches and leaps upwards, giving a mighty flap of his wings and becoming airborne. Hovering in place, sharp green eyes scan the ruins, looking for any signs of the boy who had lived, who had likely caused this, while also racking his brain for any quirk he knew of that could cause this and how. Obviously it was a destructive quirk, and potentially touch-based. Newly forked tongue flicking, he tastes the air, ears rotating this way and that as he listened and let his senses stretch out around him. The damp air limited him though, even in this half-form. As he turns, he notices for the first time what looked like the beginnings of a trail. Small footprints in blood with a stumbling gait heading for a side gate of the property and fading out on the concrete beyond. Gliding towards it, he tucks his wings, landing in a crouch at the end of the trail and carefully scanning the area, sniffing the air. Now he had a scent, picking up the smell of dust and salty tears and fear. That was all he needed to begin his search for the lost boy. Oh. Number 11 Pro Hero, Storm Beast. Quirk, Storm Beast. He has the ability to change his form from a man to a winged monster, which also allows increasing control over electricity generation and manipulation, and enhanced senses and strength. The more he is transformed, the greater the enhancement and his ability to generate electricity, but the less control he has. If he fully transforms, he risks going fully feral and becoming hostile to anyone around him. 
A small pair of gloves were folded neatly in his pocket as he walked the sidewalk, still trailing the boy, but in a less transformed appearance, simply changing his ears and nose in order to enhance his senses enough to keep on the scent trail. He had stopped for only a moment at a corner clothing store to pick up the gloves, and had used his claws to carefully cut the fingers off the index and middle fingers of both. If his hunch was correct, these would come in handy. A small voice makes his ears swivel as thunder rolled overhead, and he turns towards it, pausing his stride. Straining to listen, he hears it again, a small, young voice whimpering from under a bridge. Moving towards it, he sees a tiny boy curled up in a tight ball against the concrete wall. His hair was a silver blue, and his clothing was dirty and torn, his skin equally as dirty. He smelled of the boy he had been tracking, so he approaches him. The boy doesn't even look up at the sound of his steps, which gives the man a chance to fully change his appearance back to that of a man, not wanting to scare the boy. Crouching down, he clears his throat softly, putting a soft smile on his face, pausing as thunder rumbled in the distance. It was about to rain, which he didn't mind, but he didn't want this child out in the rain. Hello, he says, pausing when the boy flinches. Are you all right? He decides to start with, tilting his head as the boy peeks up from his arms, bloodshot red eyes glaring at him from the shadow of his brow and bangs. It's all right. I'm here to help you. Why? Comes the quick response in a voice that was very raspy and rough. No one else wants to help me. Are you a hero? Tilting his head back the other way, he considers his answer for a moment before smiling a little more and nodding. I am. My hero name is Storm Beast. But, my real name is Raiden Masayoshi. You can call me Raiden if you want. Like the god of thunder? The boy asks, his shoulders relaxing by a bare margin. Chuckling to further ease the tension a little, Raiden nods. The very same. What's your name, young man? The boy hesitates, staring at him for a long moment before answering in barely more than a whisper. Tenko Shimura? Uh, I did a bad thing. Are you here to arrest me? Not at all. I told you, I'm here to help you. But to help you, I need to know what happened. Tenko whimpers at this, shrinking back into himself, shaking his head, a hard shudder going through his frail-looking body as he scratched at his neck, seemingly absently. I didn't mean to, I didn't I swear, he whines, both hands scratching at his skin now, leaving angry red lines behind. Reaching out slowly, Raiden takes the boy's wrists and pulls them away from his neck, smiling softly when Tenko starts and blinks up at him with a mixture of fear and shock. I believe you, but I still need to know what happened, or at least how it happened, so I can help you properly. Tell me, did happen when you touched something? And how did you touch them? He asks, trying to be careful with his wording so he didn't potentially send the child into a panic attack. Tenko is very quiet for a long time, his red eyes staring straight ahead, seeming to not really see anything. I, I was holding M my dog, and he, and then I tried to grab my sister and and mama and dash, he cuts off into a sob, tears welling in his irritated eyes. That was all Raiden needed to hear, and he pulls the modified gloves out of his pocket, taking one of Tenko's hands and carefully slipping it over his little fingers, doing the same with the other. These should help. It sounds like your quirk activated suddenly. Sometimes terrible accidents can happen, because you're so young and don't know how to control such a powerful quirk yet, he murmurs, reaching out, pausing when Tenko flinches, before continuing and resting his hand gently on top of his head, smiling softly at him. My activation was a scary, dangerous thing too, and I hurt a few people. You're not alone with this, he says, deciding to not point out that he hadn't killed his entire family and destroyed his house. It had been pretty close, but his beast form then and his beast form now couldn't be compared as far as size and power went. From what you said, it seems like you have to touch all five fingers to something for your quirk to activate. To hold this with all five fingers touching it, picking up a piece of trash, he holds it out to Tenko, who hesitates for nearly a fully minute before taking the can, closing his fingers around it. When it doesn't turn to dust like his house had, his eyes go wide. The gloves stop it? Looks like. Which is good, because that means it has to be skin contact. Raiden replies with a reassuring smile, removing his hand from the boy's head. He pauses for a moment of consideration before he continues. 
How about you come with me hmm? It's about to rain, and you've been out here on your own for long enough. I bet you've been scared. Tenko blinks with wide eyes at him, confused and scared, also looking bone tired. Raiden was sure he had been on his own for several days at least, barely surviving, probably haunted by what had happened to his family and home. What he had done to his family and home. Where, where are you going to take me? The boy asks quietly, his voice small and meek. Smiling, Raiden chuckles softly to keep the atmosphere between them light, hoping he was doing a good job of keeping the boy mostly calm. Well first I'm going to get you some food. Then maybe some clean clothes. After that? If you're okay with it, you can sleep at my home tonight. Get some real rest in peace and quiet. But what if I hurt your house too? Or you? Tenko whimpers, shaking his head, his dirty hair falling in his eyes as he trembles. Raiden lets out a low rumble of a hum, reaching out and pushing the back of his hand up against Tenko's palm, little fingers spreading over his knuckles, making the boy jolt and look up with wide, scared eyes, looking between the contact of his gloved hand and Raiden, waiting for him to start falling apart. As long as you have those gloves on, it'll be fine, see? I'm fine, you're not hurting me at all, he assures gently, seeing tears well in the child's eyes as he sniffles. Turning his hand, he grasps his wrist and pulls him forward into a firm hug, gathering the boy close against his front, hearing a wretched, exhausted sob escape the boy as little hands grip at his costume tightly. I've got you, Tenko. You're safe now, he murmurs to the child, whose sobs and cries grow louder and more guttural, everything he had been pushing down since the incident surging to the surface. Sliding an arm under Tenko's thighs, he stands up straight, scooping the boy up with him and holding him close and letting him just cry his eyes out as he carried him away down the road in the general direction of his home. Oh. Some time later, a tall man with a smile made of malice and plastic comes across the underside of the bridge, finding it empty. The smile quickly turns to a snarl of rage. Oh. Raiden had stopped briefly in a fast food place and gotten a couple burgers and some fries and drinks for himself and Tenko on the walk back home. Probably not the best meal to give to a child, but he didn't think Tenko was up to sitting in a restaurant at the moment. Finding a secluded, covered table not too far away, he sets Tenko down on the bench and spreads their food out on the table. Here you go. Try to eat as much as you can, okay? He hums, smiling softly as he sits down across from him. Tenko is still for a while, staring blankly at the food, absently scratching at his neck. Looking closely, Raiden can see evidence of irritated and raw skin in several places on his face and neck. A skin condition? Or allergies? He'd worry about it later. Reaching across, he taps the burger box, tilting his head. Come on, kid. You need to eat something. Tenko makes a face, but he pulls the burger box open, picking it up and taking a bite. That seems to make him realize just how hungry he was as he eats with much more veracity, coming up for air now and then to stuff a couple fries in his mouth or take a drink of his soda. He actually eats all of his food and finishes before Raiden, who offers him some of his own fries. Once Tenko's stomach is satisfied, he goes quiet and still and peeks up through his bangs at the adult across from him. What are you going to do with me? He asks. His voice was still oddly raspy, but with the amount of crying he had done, Raiden supposed it shouldn't come as a surprise. Thinking for a few moments, taking a sip from his soda, the hero contemplates this answer. Putting him in a group home wouldn't be ideal. He had a destructive quirk that he couldn't control and had been severely traumatized by its activation. He would need one-on-one -on -one attention and a lot of therapy and training to learn to control his quirk. Raiden, as a hero, had emergency foster parent rights, so it wouldn't be out of the question to take Tenko in for the time being. Considering how volatile his own quirk had been at the beginning, and in the wrong conditions still could be, he would probably be the best person to mentor Tenko. However, he was also part of the investigation about what had happened to the Shimura house and family. To think that a child so small and young could cause so much destruction. Fostering Tenko but staying on the case might create a conflict of interest, meaning he would probably have to withdraw himself. Letting out a slow sigh, he keeps his voice gentle and his expression soft when he looks at Tenko. Well, for today, nothing more than letting you get some rest and get cleaned up. Tomorrow though, I'm going to need to take you to the police station to give a statement about what happened. 
Tenko flinches at this, and looks like he was about to get up and run from the table, red eyes wide and terrified. No, no. You aren't in trouble. I promise. Believe it or not, incidents where people get hurt or killed when someone's quirk activates aren't unheard of. Not common, but not unheard of. All you'll need to do is give an honest statement, and then you'll be remanded to a period of observation under a guardian. A guardian? Tenko echoes, sounding wary and afraid, eyes like saucers. Yes. A certified hero or other caseworker with the ability to handle your quirk as well as you, considering what you've been through. Raiden says, keeping his voice calm, which seems to soothe Tenko a little. To be honest with you, Tenko, I'm contemplating volunteering myself. The only problem with that is that because I'm the number 11 hero, I stay pretty busy. But I'm sure that I could reschedule and work around a lot of my events and such that fall outside of my usual hero work. Something seems to click in Tenko's brain at this statement, and Raiden sees a bit of light return to his eyes as he sits up straighter, his chapped, scratched-up lips twitching up a little in a tiny smile. I've seen you on TV, he says, wiggling in his seat as Raiden smiles. That's right, you said you're Storm Beast, right? I recognize your costume. I, I've never met a pro before. Raiden laughs quietly, adjusting the neckline of his costume a bit self-consciously. He was young for a high-ranking pro, having only just turned 23. He was tall and lithe, with dark hair and a short dark beard and a face and arms that were sprayed with freckles. His eyes were an unnatural green color, and the more he transformed himself, the more the crackles of purple that usually just surrounded his goat-like pupils in a ring expanded, and his face itself could easily be described as quite handsome. His costume was fairly simple because his transformations could also change his size, even if he didn't fully take on his beast form. It had no sleeves to make room for changes in the bulk of his arms, it fit comfortably on his torso with a simple lightning design going from top to bottom in purple, while the rest was black, and on the back the fabric left his shoulders open to make room for his wings. His pants were black and purple cargo pants, with purple stitching on all the pockets, and he wore simple black boots. It was pretty understated for a pro, but he didn't need or want it fancy, considering how flashy his quirk was. Well, I'm certainly one of the more underwhelming ones as far as my appearance goes, I'll admit that. I'm not flashy like all might and endeavor are, at least not in my everyday life. No, no. I've seen your fights on TV a couple times. You're so cool. Tenko declares, his stress and fear forgotten for the time being, which Raiden was glad to see. He seemed like a bright boy, which made it a shame that something like this had happened to him so early in his life. Like your fight against Mastodon. He almost got you with his permafrost quirk so many times but you were always a step faster with your wings. Popping up from sitting, Tenko stands on the bench of the picnic table, a full grin on his chapped lips now as Raiden watches him with an unusual degree of fondness for having just met the boy. And then you finally were able to get up high and finish him off with your ultimate move. Heaven's Spear. Chopping one hand downward, Tenko giggles happily, eyes bright as he relived watching the fight and the flashy, massive but precise lightning bolt that had finished it all. Laughing, the hero lets him bounce around on the bench, glad to see that he was still able to be happy. That gave him hope that healing was going to be more than possible for Tenko. So, Tenko, do you want to be a hero? He asks, cocking his head. I do. Oh but, father hates heroes. I was never allowed to talk about them, ever the boy replies, his happy, excited mood quickly turning gloomy again as he looked down at the table, brow furrowing as he scratches at the bend of his elbow. Sometimes he'd hit me if he caught me watching heroes on TV or if I talked about wanting to be one. He'd, he'd hit me a lot. I'm sorry to hear that. That's a terrible thing to do to someone. Raiden says softly, reaching across the table and gently pulling Tenko's scratching fingers away from his skin. I think you'd be a great hero. You've already been through so much for being so young, so you could easily reach other young people who have experienced similar things in ways that others who haven't couldn't. But my quirk, it's not very heroic. Tenko mutters, still seeming downcast. Raiden couldn't be sure, but at least it didn't seem like his mind was on his dead family very much. Says who? The hero snorts, smirking when the boy looks up at him. Any quirk can be heroic or villainous. 
It all depends on how it's used and the person using it. Standing, he moves around to Tenko's side of the table, sitting on the bench beside the standing boy, leaning back against the table. When my quirk first appeared and I didn't have good control over it, I was told a lot it was too dangerous, destructive, and unpredictable for me to be a good hero. Honestly, I didn't even want to be a hero at first. I was kind of pushed into it. But once I was in it, I found myself enjoying it. Making a difference in someone's life, even in a small way, saving people who can't save themselves, it's a rewarding profession. Tenko is quiet, looking from his hand to the hero sitting beside him a few times, a thoughtful frown in place. I can be a hero, even after what I did? He eventually murmurs, eyes welling up again with tears. Raiden reaches over, taking Tenko's hand in his own and gives it a light squeeze. I believe so. Truly. It's going to be a hard path, but if the life of a hero is something you want down to your very core, then you'll find a way to walk it. He was relieved when Tenko smiles at this, feeling his little fingers squeeze his hand back. Now then, I'm sure you'd like to get cleaned up and get some sleep, HM? It's not too far to get to my home, but I can carry you if you like. The boy contemplates his options for a moment before holding his arms up to get picked up. Chuckling, Raiden scoops him up holding him with one arm while he gathers their trash together, throwing it away and passing Tenko his drink, carrying his own with his free hand. They had hardly made it two blocks before he feels Tenko slumping against his shoulder. So, he tosses their drinks in a trash can and adjusts the small boy, who quickly falls sound asleep against his shoulder, his body finally giving in to his exhaustion. He normally flew home, but he wasn't sure how Tenko would handle flying right now. He had been rattled enough. So he just continues walking, listening to thunder rumble overhead, smelling rain approaching on the wind. Soon he's stepping through the front gate of his private home, which was a modestly sized two-story building, having a slightly more American style to its design and coloring. The inside was similar, influenced by the brief amount of time that Raiden had lived overseas during his childhood, which was probably the happiest part of it as well. Stepping into the living room, he leans over and gently lays Tenko on the couch, pulling a blanket off the back of it and covering the boy. Once he seems like he was going to continue sleeping, Raiden steps away, pulling out his phone and moving into the kitchen so he wouldn't disturb the sleeping child. About time you reported in again. What's the status? A female voice says flatly upon picking up his call. Raiden sighs, hearing a grumble of, don't sigh at me from her end. I found the kid who survived, who's also the one who caused all the damage. Tenko Shimura. He's five, and it seems like his quirk activated suddenly and the incident was a combination of panic and terror, he replies, absently picking at one of his nails. The woman he was talking to was his personal sidekick, Sakiko Chiharu. Quirk, spring blooms. Hero name, Chika. She could manipulate flowers, and also produce different kinds of pollen to cause various psychological effects like hallucinations, mania, or rage. She was a little older than Raiden, and certainly had her hands full dealing with him since. He tended to sort of do his own thing, despite having an agency. Where is he now? Sleeping on my couch. Poor little pup is traumatized and exhausted. So, I fed him and brought him home. I'm thinking of activating my emergency foster parent powers. Sakiko is quiet for a long time, and he could almost feel her glower through the phone, hearing a faint tapping of her pen against her desk back at the agency. He knew he was in for a scolding the next time they were face to face, but for now she was all business. He's safe, she asks, tone tight but professional, and Raiden couldn't help but squirm a bit. I believe so. I bought some gloves and modified them to only cover three of his fingers. It seems like his quirk is touch based and needs contact with all five fingers to activate. So, as long as some are covered by something, it's safe. I tested that theory with a bit of trash when I first found him, and then he was eating and holding a cup with his hands normally with no problems. Aha, uh -huh. and what do you plan to do about the investigation? Sakiko draws, and he could almost feel the pen poking at his chest like she would normally do to him in her efforts to keep his mind on track. Tomorrow I'm going to take him down to the police station so he can give a statement. From there I'll handle all the foster parent stuff. This wasn't on purpose though, and it's not the first time that a quirk activation has killed people. Yeah, but it's been a while since it's been on this scale. True enough. 
He shouldn't be punished for something out of his control though. Not to say he's not going to need extensive training and therapy, but those things can be taken in steps and stages. My God, you already care for the boy, don't you? You're like an old lady, wanting to adopt every stray that comes your way. Sakiko sighs, sounding utterly exhausted, while Raiden just lets out an offended squawk. How stable is the kid? Tenko. And he seems like he's holding it together pretty well. He cried it out pretty good when I first picked him up, and then fell asleep shortly after I fed him. Honestly I'm impressed but, I don't expect it to last forever. It's going to really sink in for him eventually, so I'll have to keep an eye on him. Sakiko again goes quiet, and he hears her mutter something under her breath but can't quite make it out. How do you expect to take care of a kid? Especially one who's going to have needs like his? You've got sponsors you need to meet with, interviews to give, never mind your normal hero work. You don't get a lot of downtime. Never mind that you can barely take care of yourself. Hey now I take care of myself just fine dash. When's the last time you cooked a meal and didn't almost burn your house down? A growing child can't live off of fast food and cake. He grumbles when she cuts him off and hates that she's right. He might not do well in the agency daycare either. That's a lot of chaos for a traumatized kid to deal with. Are you sure you want to take him under your wing? Raiden is quiet for a long, long time, mulling this over, absently twisting some of his short beard with the pads of a couple fingers. He had the income to more than pay for Tenko's needs, but Sakiko had a point. He was very busy, and he could only reshuffle his schedules so much. Plus being a pro was dangerous, and he got hurt sometimes, sometimes pretty badly. If he didn't come home one night because he was in the hospital, who would look after Tenko? Both of his parents were dead, not that he would trust the boy with his father, at least, and he and his mother had always been a package deal. All of his friends were pros as well, or at least sidekicks or other professionals in the industry who were also very busy. He wasn't comfortable hiring a nanny or putting Tenko in daycare, at least not until he had gotten some therapy and learned how to control his quirk at least a little. Then there was also the issue of the boy's apparent allergies or skin condition, which would need to be addressed, which meant doctor visits and regular medication. However, Raiden would be the first to admit that he had always wanted kids. This wasn't exactly how he had planned on going about it. He had planned on one day finding himself a loving partner and then adopting or something but, he was confident he could swing the single dad life. He would have to if he was going to commit to raising this kid. Because he knew himself well enough to know that this wouldn't just be a foster care situation. He wouldn't be able to let go once he took Tenko on, and it would eventually lead to adoption. It would be an enormous change in his life and lifestyle, which considering he was still a young adult and had only been a pro for a few years, despite his rapid rise in popularity, was a lot to think about. He'd have to think about schooling and doctor visits and how he was going to discipline and guide and nurture the boy. It would be a delicate process considering what Tenko had already been through. But it was one he was up for. Sucking in a deep breath, he steals himself and finally replies to his sidekick. Yes, I'm sure. It's going to be an adjustment and a lot of trial and error. But I'm confident I can give him a good, loving home to grow and thrive in, he says with confidence, hearing Sakiko sigh on the other end, knowing there was no changing his mind at this point. All right then. I'll draw up the proper papers and get them ready. You can pick them up on the way to the police station tomorrow and have all the proper people sign them there, she says with a note of resignation. Satisfied, he bids her a good night and ends the call, getting himself a cold drink from the fridge and making his way back to the living room to check on Tenko. He had shifted around on the couch a little, curling up more to one side of it and tucking his knees up to his chest, pulling the blanket close to himself. It was a sweet sight to see. There was a recliner off to one side, and that's where Raiden decides that he was going to sleep, once he got changed out of his hero uniform, not wanting the boy to wake up in the middle of the night alone in a strange place. Making his way upstairs, he pauses in the door of the guest room, scanning it quietly. It needed to be cleaned, the sheets on the bed probably needed changing just to eliminate any musty smells. He also had some boxes and other things he had put in the room as temporary storage that he'd have to address. Then he'd work on turning it into a comfortable and fun bedroom for Tenko to call his own. Making a mental note of what would need to be done first, he continues to his bedroom, peeling his uniform off and hanging it up in his closet, 
grabbing some sleep pants and a t-shirt out of a drawer and pulling them on. Grabbing his phone charger, he brings it with him back downstairs and plugs it in by the recliner, sitting down and contenting himself with a quiet evening. He kept one eye on Tenko, but passed time scrolling through news articles, both on local crime so he could plan his patrols for the next couple weeks, and just general hero news. It seemed All Might had rescued a bus full of people in his hometown. And not to be outdone, Endeavor had resolved a handful of incidents in his usual all-go, no-stop fashion. Raiden was known for his own boundless energy, but the small handful of times he had worked alongside Endeavor, since their agencies were near each other and their patrols sometimes overlapped, he had had a hard time keeping up with his. He supposed that was the difference between the number 11 and number 2 hero. It was a massive canyon as far as abilities and experience went, and Raiden would be the first to admit that he still had a lot to learn. He had never had the pleasure of working with All Might, hadn't even seen him in passing, but the stories he heard left him a little starstruck. The man was a living legend, possibly the greatest hero to ever exist. Some online blogs theorized that he was immortal, considering he had been doing hero work for at least the last 30 years with no indication of slowing down. Raiden wondered if he managed to break into the top 10 if he'd meet the legend himself in person then? Maybe during the billboard announcements. But the top 10 was a whole other league, its own club so to say, and he wasn't sure if he belonged in it. He hadn't gotten to the number 11 spot just on his looks, he had resolved a number of large cases, put countless villains away, and done his share of work with the citizens surrounding his agency since he had formed his own. Giving his head a shake, he reminds himself that dreams like that weren't his priority. His priorities laid with his agency and area of influence, as well as the little boy sleeping deeply on his couch. He had to make sure Tenko was safe, happy, and was getting his needs met, whatever they may be. He hoped he would be a good guardian, though he didn't feel the bar would be set very high considering what the child had said about his father. He supposed that was one thing he had in common with Tenko in a way. Tenko's father would hit him when he talked about heroes, and Raiden's father would hit him when he tried to resist the path of a hero that he was being shoved down. It had been some beautiful irony when his father had died before he had even graduated from hero school with his license, so he had never gotten to see the life he had been living vicariously through his son come to fruition. It was things like that that helped Raiden sleep peacefully at night, though he did sometimes miss his mother. Making a note of a couple articles talking about a string of robberies that had taken place over the last few days, deciding to add those few block to his patrol for the next time he went out, Raiden continues his absent scrolling, scanning over various gossip articles about this or that. Apparently there were rumors that Endeavor had another son, a handful of heroes had made successful debuts across the country, and there is a murderer on the loose somewhere in Osaka. That last one wasn't really Raiden's problem, but he does forward the article to his work email and sends it to one of the dispatchers at his agency who was working the night shift to see if they could lend any help or help with potential leads. The dispatcher replies to the email to confirm it had been received, tacking on a comment at the bottom of it chastising him for working during his time off and telling him to go to bed. Frowning, though really it looked more like a pout, Raiden wonders why all of his employees treated him like he wasn't capable of regulating himself though at the same time he remembers all the times he had worked himself so much and so long that he had only gotten rest because he had passed out after going full throttle for several days. Dehydration and exhaustion would do that, he supposed. There reached a point, even for superhumans, where the body went into a forced shutdown to recover. Glancing at the clock, he notices that he had spent a number of hours scrolling through articles by this point, as well as generally sitting with his own thoughts and trying to plan his schedule around taking care of Tenko. It was going on 11 o'clock now, which he guessed was as good a time as any to get to sleep. Getting up to use the bathroom one last time and get himself a blanket, flipping the light on in the hall to leave some illumination, he returns to his recliner and turns the living room lights off with a remote on the small end table beside him. Getting comfortable, he closes his eyes and tries to relax himself enough to fall asleep. It continues lightly raining into the night, gentle thunder rumbling somewhere in the distance. It was around 3.30 in the morning when Tenko stirs from his sleep, still exhausted, but a nightmare had woken him up. Sitting up quickly, tears in his itchy eyes, he sniffles, 
looking around in confusion. He didn't know where he was. It wasn't home, home didn't exist anymore. He had broken it, broken his family. But there had been a hero, blinking, waking up a little more fully now, he really focuses as he looks around. The house he was in wasn't familiar, that much was obvious, but it was pretty cozy looking. The couch he was on was comfortable, and the blanket rumpled in his lap was warm and soft. He stiffens when he hears a soft snore behind him, twisting in place, quickly locating the source of the noise. In a recliner, fully laid flat but half draped off of one arm of it was the hero who had rescued him. Storm Beast. Brr. Tenko thought he had said his name was Raiden? That sounded right. It felt strange, knowing a pro's name outside of their hero persona. A lump forms in his throat as the memories of that afternoon come rushing back, looking up from the ball he had curled himself into and looking into strange but kind green eyes paired with a warm and gentle smile. So different from the cold indifference or anger he was used to from father, or the exhaustion and worry that mama always wore. It had looked like Raiden had actually been pleased to see him, even after Tenko had told him about the, the breaking. He felt like something in him had broken that night too. His insides itched almost as much as his outsides, and he felt a little queasy as his mind spun. Not enough that he thought he was going to be sick though, which he was glad about. He didn't like getting sick. The more he thought though, the more he itched, reaching up and scratching at his eye and cheek to try and soothe it. Looking more closely at Raiden, Tenko thought he looked strange not in his pro uniform. Then again, that was all he had ever seen him in, in person and on TV. In a casual shirt and pants, feet bare, covered, sort of, by a light blanket, he looked like just a normal guy. Not someone who saved people, who had incredible, breathtaking powers. But even asleep, flopped out in the chair the way he was, he still looked kind. Like someone who, even if he wasn't a hero, would help a poor, scared, lost kid under a bridge. Plus, he had told Tenko that he could be a hero too. Him. Even after everything, after the breaking, even with his quirk that destroyed anything he touched, Raiden thought he would still be a good hero. Someone who could save those that couldn't save themselves. It made something inside him squirm with joy, like little hummingbirds fluttering around inside his chest. Excitement and joy, hope even, blooms within his chest, fighting for a place alongside the fear and despair he had been wrestling with since that night. He was still afraid about what would happen to him next, what talking to the police would be like. Would Raiden stay with him while he talked? Would he stop the police from arresting him if they tried to? He hoped so. He didn't want to go to jail. He was only five, he didn't know how he'd survive a place like that. Raiden had also said he was thinking about taking Tenko in. That was a confusing thing to him, but it wasn't like he had anywhere else to go. His whole family was gone now, and he didn't want to go back to hiding under the bridge, only getting pity-filled looks from all the passers-by, who didn't ever get involved themselves, but who all hoped that some hero, somewhere, somehow, would stop and help him. He had been losing hope that anyone would help him, hero or civilian. But here he was, in a hero's house. The idea of living with a hero who he had watched so much on TV, always out of view of father, made his guts do flip-flops with excitement. It felt like a dream. A wonderful dream, where he could escape father's abuse and his hatred of heroes. A wonderful dream where he could become a hero. Joy swirled in with the ever-present and pressing despair he had been wrestling with since the breaking, and he wanted nothing more than to run to his sister and let his joy bubble over and tell her all about Raiden and his encouraging words. But, his sister was gone. Forever. That thought crashes into Tenko like a concrete block, sitting heavy on his chest, making it hard to breathe as his eyes well up, his vision blurring as he scratches harder at his face and then his neck, trembling. His sister wouldn't ever play with him again. He'd never have another hug from Mama. He'd never get to spend time with his grandparents again. They were gone. It was his fault. He doesn't even realize he was hyperventilating and sobbing until a warm, gentle hand rests on his back and he's being pulled into someone's lap and held close. It takes him a moment to recognize that it was Raiden, woken by his breakdown as his emotions whipped around in every direction, but once he realizes who it was, he clings onto the hero. His clothes smelled like the breeze before a heavy rainstorm, like cologne, like chocolate and brown sugar, 
and his arms were strong and safe and so warm. He melts against the man, sobbing and shaking, babbling incoherently for his sister, his mother, his grandparents. He missed them so bitterly, and he hated himself for breaking them, killing them, with nothing more than a touch. He'd never forget as long as he lived, reaching out for his mother and watching her crumble to dust in front of him, even as she raced to embrace him, love in her eyes even as she, Tenko, breathe pup. Raiden's soft deep voice cuts through the spiral of his thoughts, and Tenko hiccups and sobs, a wet spot of tears and drool forming on the hero's chest. Tenko can feel one of his large hands gently rubbing up and down his back, now and then carting through his dirty, tangled hair his other arm tight around him for security. Come on, breathe. Out. Oh, that's it, the hero whispers, taking in deep breaths and slowly releasing them until Tenko copied him, his own punctuated by sobs or hiccups. Eventually he starts to breathe a little more steadily, slowly calming down, his sobbing slowing until it faded out, leaving Tenko feeling raw and exhausted. His skin ached on his neck and face where he had clawed himself raw without realizing it. Sniffling pitifully, Tenko dares a glance up at the hero, who looked tired, but not mad. It was strange being so near a hero. He kept expecting the ghost of his father to appear and drag him away for a beating for daring to associate with a hero, or for Raiden himself to suddenly become angry or upset with him. It never comes though. All he's met with is gentle, patient understanding. Like Raiden truly knew something about what he was going through. Sniffing again, trying to keep from getting snot on Raiden's shirt along with the tears and spit, he swallows thickly. Ah, uh, I'm a sorry. For what? Raiden asks gently, still holding on to Tenko just as tightly, just as securely. He had never felt so safe. W waking you you up, the boy whimpers, pressing his forehead to the man's chest, wanting to hide from his feelings. He feels a hand gently pet the back of his head. You don't need to be sorry about that, Tenko. You've been through a lot. I would never expect you to not cry over it at least a little, Raiden says, and it's just so compassionate. Tenko doesn't know what to do with it. All his life he had been told that heroes were bad or that they didn't actually care about others, just fame or power. But here was the number 11 pro, holding a boy he barely knew in his house, comforting him despite what he had done. He was so understanding about it all that the confusion almost made Tenko angry. He should be mad at him for killing his family, right? It was his fault he had done it and had said as much. He was a villain, surely, in the eyes of a hero like Raiden. Like Storm Beast. I think you'd be a great hero. The memory of those words cuts through the acidic thoughts swirling in his mind, making them scatter like roaches in the light. That was right. Raiden didn't see him as a villain. He had told him that he could be a hero, and Tenko believed him. He didn't think that the man had said those things just to placate him to keep him cooperative. You with me, kid? Raiden murmurs after a lengthy period of silence, startling Tenko out of his thoughts. Blinking, he sits back, rubbing at his eyes, feeling one hand still resting steadily on his shoulder. He nods, not trusting his voice, still feeling a little shaky. Good, you had me worried there, daring to look up. Tenko sees warm kindness in his tired eyes and almost starts crying again. Then he sees Raiden's brow furrow and the man tilts his head. You're bleeding. Come on, let's get that taken care of, then we can go back to bed. I'll show you where the bathroom is too. And then, Tenko is being lifted up into Raiden's arms and carried through the room and down a small hall, past some stairs, and into a fair-sized bathroom. He's told that this is the downstairs bathroom and that there was also a bigger one upstairs between the two bedrooms up there. Raiden sits him down on the countertop beside the sink and rummages around in a couple cabinets, eventually producing a clean, soft cloth and some antiseptic cream. He makes no comments about Tenko's scratching himself until he bled as he gently washes the scratches on his neck with warm water and a careful touch. His hands weren't as careful and delicate as Mama's had been, but they were still gentle and thorough, wiping away much of the grime on his face and neck as well as his dry, irritated skin. He then applies the ointment to the scratches, gently pushing Tenko's hand down as he reaches up to absently scratch by his ear, not commenting about that either. 
Once he's satisfied, he steps back with a small nod and smile, putting the things he had gotten out away. Then, uh, much better. Hopefully we can get you some cream that will help with all your itching. Is it allergies? The man asks, tilting his head curiously. Tenko shrugs limply. Mama always said so, but we never found anything that would help. It was always worse at home. Tenko murmurs, looking down in a way, barely seeing Raiden nod in his peripheral vision. Good to know. In the meantime, if you need to use the toilet, I'll step out. Otherwise, I think it's a good idea to get back to sleep for a few more hours. Raiden says, glancing out the bathroom door as thunder rumbles softly as it had been doing all night. Okay, can, can I have some water too? I'm thirsty. Tenko asks, glancing back at the man, who nods, lifting him off the counter and setting him on the floor gently. By the time he gets back with a glass of water, Tenko had finished his business and washed his hands, and he drinks the water greedily, more thirsty than he realized. Raiden had also changed his shirt out of the tear and drool-stained one from before, and Tenko bites back another apology. If you're comfortable, I can show you the guest room that'll be yours, as well as my room. Can- See can I sleep in your room? Uh, I don't dub you on to be alone. Tenko almost whimpers, scuffing his feet on the floor. He didn't want to be alone if he woke up from another nightmare, or if his thoughts started spiraling again. Rather than rebuff him, he hears a gentle chuckle from the hero before him, the empty glass is taken from his hand and placed on the counter, and he's being picked up again. It was nice to be carried around like this, especially when his sister wasn't around to tease him for being a big baby. That thought makes him flinch with a small whimper, and he buries his face in the crook of Raiden's neck to hide from the images of his sister's smiling face. Raiden doesn't say anything as he carries him upstairs, heading down a short hall past a couple other rooms and a pair of hall closets. The door at the end opens up into a large bedroom with a king-sized bed against the back wall between two glass double doors that opened onto a long balcony. The wall to the left had a large window as well, and the wall to the right had two doors, one to a closet and one to a bathroom maybe? All the curtains were drawn and it was dark in the room, too dark for Tenko to see after being in a bright bathroom, but Raiden doesn't seem to have trouble navigating in the dark. In fact, when he sets Tenko on the bed after pulling the soft blankets back, the boy can see that his eyes had a slight sheen to them, similar to a cat's in the darkness. After fiddling with a clock for a few seconds, Raiden walks around to the other side of the bed and climbs in, keeping a polite distance between them to allow for Tenko to initiate contact if the boy wanted to. Which he did. As soon as the hero is laid down and covered, Tenko scoots over and nestles himself against his side, gloved hand curling into his shirt tightly like he was afraid the man would disappear if he didn't hold on. Like he'd wake up still under the bridge in the cold and rain, and not in a warm bed, being protected and cared for by a pro hero. An arm wraps around his back and side, protective and secure, and Tenko melts against Raiden, his bones aching with exhaustion even after hours of sleep. Warm, and feeling safe even from his own mind, Tenko closes his itching eyes and lets himself drift back off to sleep, hoping that when he woke up again, he'd still be right here ask an answer. Chapter Text Tenko wakes several hours of blissful, dreamless sleep later to the feeling of the bed moving and dipping. He wasn't half laying on Raiden anymore, which prompts him to blink his eyes open, glancing around. The room was dimly lit by early morning light coming through curtains that had been slightly opened, revealing warm, cozy colored sheets bundled up around him, the walls of the room a light gray, the furniture all varying shades of natural woods. He was warm and comfortable, and as he slid his eyes around, taking in his field of vision, he spots Raiden sitting on the edge of the bed, wearing a different shirt from the one he had slept in, leaned over like he was tying his shoes. How long had the man been awake? Shifting under the sheets, Tenko resists the idea of waking up for the day for a while longer, far too comfortable and warm right now, and wanting to bask in this safe feeling that had wrapped around him like a hug. His movement seems to get Raiden's attention though, as the man looks over his shoulder at him, seeing his eyes open and he smiles. Morning, he murmurs quietly. Time to start waking up. We need to head down to the police station in about an hour. The reminder wakes Tenko up immediately, and he sits up, red eyes blowing wide as his panic from the day before rushes back. Sure, Raiden had said he wasn't in trouble, 
But how could he be sure? Like, absolutely sure. Do we really have to go? He asks, voice still as raspy as it had been the day before, his throat a bit scratchy. Raiden lets out a patient-sounding hum, turning more fully to face him, reaching out and resting a hand on his knee. The simple touch was enough to chase away a lot of the fear and tension that had taken Tenko's body over as he blinks oulishly at the hero. I'm afraid so. I hate to put you through police questioning so quickly, but it's unfortunately necessary. But, afterwards I was thinking we could go shopping, get you some new clothes, some things to put in your new room. Things like that. Have some fun with the day, he says, clearly trying to be reassuring. It kind of works, but Tenko still anxiously twisted fistfuls of quilt between his hands. Also, we need to stop by my agency first to pick up some papers, he tacks on. Excitement lights up inside Tenko. Sitting up straighter, he squirms in place, grinning despite his anxiety. Your agency? Will I get to meet your sidekicks? Do you have a giant wall of computer screens like in the movies where you can see all of them at once and track villains and stuff? Can I see your office? He asks in rapid fire, shifting up to his knees as he bounces excitedly, drawing a laugh from the man in front of him. Not today I'm afraid. Maybe in a few days once you're settled in a little more, I'll give you the grand tour. In fact I'm going to try and make it my mission to avoid my sidekicks when we stop by. Chica in particular. I have a scolding waiting for me and I'd rather put it off for later. Raiden chuckles. Pausing, green eyes cut up and down Tenko's small form. He hums, tilting his head a little. I'd like for you to have a bath but you don't have any spare clothes and we don't have time for the ones you're wearing to be washed and dried. A grimace pulls at his face, and for a moment Tenko thinks that he actually felt guilty? Uh, that's okay. I mean, if we're really getting me more clothes later then, then these can just get thrown away. And I can take a bath when we get back? Tenko asks more than says, not really sure himself. He wasn't fully convinced yet that he'd be coming back to this house with Raiden rather than to a jail or orphanage. He's about to say more, but a loud gurgle from his stomach cuts him off a red flush coming over his itchy face. Sorry, he murmurs, squirming anxiously. About what? I'm hungry too. Although, I'll warn you now. I'm not much of a cook. I can do sweets, and I can bake, but I'm hopeless when it comes to making regular lunches and dinners. It's something that Chica likes to tease me about actually. She says the only reason I'm not massively overweight from eating so much takeout is because my quirk makes my metabolism so fast. Raiden snorts. Tenko blinks at a few of the words, tilting his head curiously, having never heard them before. Which Raiden seems to pick up on, smiling and chuckling. Sorry. Chika says the only reason I'm not fat is because my cork burns a lot of energy really quickly. Better? Nodding a few times, Tenko manages a shaky smile, still nervous about the police station. When Raiden stands, he sees that he was wearing the pants and boots of his hero uniform, but he was wearing a dark purple button-down shirt tucked into them instead of his usual top. Tilting his head, Tenko blinks a few times. Why are you only half in your hero costume? No I've got all of it on, see? Undoing a couple buttons, Raiden pulls. The shirt aside, showing the top of the hero costume underneath. Technically I'm still working today. But taking care of you falls under hero work, so I still have to suit up. Plus it's better to be wearing it anyway. Just in case I have to quickly respond to an emergency while we're out, he pauses for a moment, frowning deeply, his brow furrowing and for a moment Tenko thinks he was upset about something. Tenko, if that happens, I want you to make sure you keep yourself safe, even if you have to hide. Alright? I'll always be able to find you. I've got a good nose, tapping his nose a couple times for emphasis, Tenko relaxes as Raiden's warm smile returns. Ugh. I can do that he says, seeing Raiden relax quite a bit. Okay, okay good. Now come on. You like pancakes? I can at least make those. Oh. Raiden was thankful the morning had gone well. Tenko seems to have slept well once they had both gotten into an actual bed, and the gentle sound of rain had lulled him to sleep as well. The rain had since stopped, but the sky was still a gloomy gray, promising rain again later that afternoon. Lucky him, he had a car for occasions where he couldn't fly to his destination. Doubly lucky, because he still wasn't sure how Tenko would handle flying. 
The boy seemed to have recovered well from the panic attack he had had in the middle of the night as well, though Raiden does note that he would occasionally scratch at the various dry or irritated spots on his face or arms. It seemed to get worse when his anxiety spiked or his thoughts turned to something unpleasant, so the hero did his best to redirect the child when he saw that happening. It wasn't foolproof though, Tenko was clearly very nervous about the police interview, and there were so many ways to reassure him with no proof. Breakfast went by quickly, and before long they're in Raiden's simple black car, the windows darkly tinted for privacy, and heading towards his agency to pick up the papers to activate his emergency foster parent rights. Tenko was bouncing in his seat in excitement as they pull up to the tall building made almost entirely of glass windows. It wasn't as massive as Endeavor's agency, but it was still pretty impressive. Raiden employed about 15 sidekicks at the moment, with plenty of room to expand, and also had an entire floor dedicated to dispatching, large and advanced enough that the more small-time heroes often tapped into his resources to streamline their jobs. He had a number of people that were on specific task forces to handle larger cases, and the entire ground floor was a public lobby. This allowed the citizens in his district to come in and leave tips or requests for aid and the like, which would be filtered up to the dispatch floor, or if it was urgent enough to Raiden himself or one of his sidekicks. He also had a section of the floor dedicated to taking care of those who were on the less fortunate side. The homeless, those that were struggling for money. They could come in for a hot meal and then go to the donation center to get clothing, medical supplies, toys for their children. When he had started his own agency, only a handful of years ago now, he had noticed the number of destitute in his district and that the local smaller heroes really weren't able to do much about them, so he had decided to put his altruistic side to work and created the aid center. He thanked it in part for his rapid rise in the hero rankings, and it was also a fairly unique thing to have in his main agency building, even among the other high-ranking pros. Tenko just about had stars in his eyes as he walked in the front door clinging to Raiden's hand, head cranking every which way to take in the high ceilings, the bright but not overwhelming lights, the live plants, rock gardens and water walls that made up much of the decor, which paired well with the comfortable furniture in the waiting areas, giving the reception area a nice, welcoming feeling. People came and went, some members of the public, some being employees and even a couple interns, being students from UA who were on work studies within the agency. Raiden usually worked directly with them the first week or so of their studies, and then assigned them to a sidekick, preferring to do much of his work alone. But he was usually available if they had questions for him directly. Luckily, none of them stopped them, and they're able to make it up to the front desk unaccosted. Yuri! My absolute favorite of receptionists, how are you this fine morning? Raiden greets, laying it on very thick as the woman cuts a look up at him from behind her glasses. Clearing his throat, he tones it down a little and plasters on a grin, trying to hide how his eyes cut around, praying that Sakiko hadn't somehow caught wind of his arrival already. I believe that Miss Chika left some papers down here for me this morning? I just need them and then I really must hurry along. It's almost like you're trying to avoid someone, Storm Beast. I wonder who that could be. Yuri draws. Her two sharp viper fangs created by her quirk flashing in the faint sunlight coming through one of the floor-to-ceiling windows. Should I page Chica to inform her that you're here? She continues, finger hovering dangerously over a button on her telephone. No, he bursts, feeling Tenko jolt next to him at the sudden volume. Clearing his throat, he gently rests a hand on top of the boy's head, patting him lightly. Mm, that's quite okay. I just need the papers and then I need to get myself and this young man here down to the police station, before Chica gets down here and drugs me into compliance with her pollen. Is the unspoken end of that sentence as Yuri's finger continues hovering. Honestly, sometimes he felt like he was in an abusive relationship with all these women he hired. It was like they all relished in making him squirm, but also competed with each other on who could mother him more. Yuri looks over the top of her desk and down at Tenko who to his credit is able to manage a shy wave and a shaky smile under her sharp eyes. She examines him for a few moments before leaning back, finally moving her hand away from the button. So this is the kid you picked up yesterday? He's awfully dirty, she comments. Raiden feels Tenko wilt against his side and puffs up a little in a sudden rush of protective defense of the child, his breath smelling of ozone when he speaks. 
Well then it's a good thing I'm going to be buying him a whole new wardrobe after we're done at the police station, isn't it? He nearly hisses, hand coming to rest on Tenko's shoulder to reassure him. Don't make fun of a kid who just went through something terrible. It's unbecoming and not a good look, he continues. It was simply an observation. Yori says, ignoring his growl of a distasteful one, shuffling through some papers on her desk and producing a yellow envelope with his name written on the top corner, holding it out to him. This is everything you'll need to fill out and submit to activate your foster parent rights. Chika already filled out the basics like your name, personal information, hero identification, and so on. You simply need to fill in the blanks. No doubt you'll be waiting for half the day at the police station so you should have plenty of time to get it done, the woman draws, seeming bored, but Raiden knew better. With the way her eyes kept traveling to Tenko, he could see clearly, from working with her for years, that she was concerned about the boy. Thank you Yuri. I don't know what I'd do without you. You don't want me to answer that. Yuri replies, not looking at him as she shuffled through some more papers. Also I entered into the system that you'd be unavailable for calls until next Monday. That should give you plenty of time to get the kids set up in your house and figure out sitter arrangements for when you have to return to work. I rescheduled the meeting you had with that cologne sponsor you were supposed to have tomorrow as well. They were very understanding, with the way she says the last sentence, Raiden got the impression that she had all but held their noses to the metaphorical grindstone until they had agreed to the reschedule. Exhaling a gusty breath, he nods, tapping the envelope absently against his chest. You're a lifesaver. I'll have to get you something special for the next holiday we've got coming up. You really should. Now Shu. Didn't you say you had to get to the police station? She replies, waving him off dismissively, sparing Tenko another glance. Give Tea Tree Bomb a try. Just be careful by his eyes and mouth. Quickly squashing a knowing smirk, Raiden nods, clearing his throat. Right? I'll look for that when we're shopping later. Come on, Tenko. We need to go, he hums, taking Tenko's hand when the boy holds it up for him, leading him back out of the building. So, what did you think of your first venture into my agency, huh? You'll probably see a lot more of it in the near future. It was, um, trailing off, Tenko seemed unsure of how to put his thoughts in order, and Raiden can't help the chuckle that comes from him. Yuri is always like that, it's nothing personal. She's a very caring person, she just doesn't express it much. Once you've been around her a little, you get used to her, a uh, blunt nature, he supplies. Tenko nods, shoulders relaxing a little at Raiden catching on so quickly to where his thoughts had gone. Aside from Yori being herself, what did you think? He asks again, watching Tenko's eyes light up again. So cool. I can't wait to see more and meet your sidekicks. It smelled so nice in there and it was bright but not too bright and everyone seemed so happy to be there. But... Why do you want to avoid Chika so bad? Why would she want to scold you? Sighing at the questions, Raiden opens the back door of his car when they reach it, getting Tenko buckled in, going around to the front and sliding in behind the wheel. He thinks on how he could answer that in a way that a five-year-old could understand. Well, she wasn't very happy that I decided so quickly to foster you. She thinks I didn't think it through enough and just made a quick decision with how I was feeling in the moment. Which I didn't. I gave taking you in and taking care of you a lot of thought, looking at Tenko in the rearview mirror, he can see the boy looked thoughtful, but not upset. Good, so far anyway. She also worries that I won't have a lot of time to give you because I'm so busy with hero work and all of the side stuff that comes with being a hero. I think she doesn't give my ability to shuffle things around and avoid not needed things enough credit. Is she upset that you, you want to foster me? Tenko asks. Voice sounding very small suddenly, and Raiden wished he could reach back and hold the child. No, Tenko. She just worries. I haven't always taken the best care of myself, so she worries that taking on one more responsibility will make those habits come back. They won't though, and don't think that you're a burden. You're not, not at all, looking at Tenko again, he can see tears in his eyes. Who knew where his thoughts were? I'm excited to have you in my home, Tenko. I know this isn't the best situation for you, but I hope one day you can call my home our home instead. Whatever you need from me, I'll do everything in my power to make sure you have it. Tenko sniffles deeply, trying to rein himself in, nodding firmly in his reflection. Raiden smiles, focusing back on the road, 
putting some music on quietly to fill the silence. The child tenses up considerably when they pull into the side parking lot of the police station, one reserved for employees and heroes. When Raiden opens his door, he holds his arms up to him, wanting to be carried, which the man is only too happy to do, scooping him up and using his hip to shut the door. He lets Tenko hold onto the envelope of papers as they walk inside, approaching a side counter and clearing his throat to get the attention of the secretary on the other side of it. An appointment for an interview should have made under the name Storm Beast last night. About a quirk incident a few days ago. I have it right here, she says after a few moments of tapping, looking up at the hero and the scared little boy he was holding. Will you be the acting guardian and advocate for the child? She asks, to which Raiden nods, feeling Tenko's free hand tighten in his shirt. All right, have a seat over there. Someone will be with you shortly, Storm Beast. Thanking her. Raiden snags a pen from a cup on the desk and carries Tenko over to the waiting area, setting him down in one of the chairs, much more uncomfortable than the ones in his agency, taking a seat beside him. The boy was fidgeting and scratching, clearly anxious as Raiden pulls out the packet of papers from within the envelope. Sakiko had done a good job of filling out the vast majority of it. Even as far as the places he had lived in the last ten years, his schooling, the basics of his medical history to show that, outside injuries involved in his work, he was a healthy young man. There was very little he had to supplement, and he gets it done as quickly as possible, signing where he needed to and sliding the finished papers back into the envelope, putting it aside so he could scoop Tenko up, letting the boy lean up against his chest. It's okay, pup. You have nothing to be afraid of, he murmurs, heartbreaking at the feeling of the child trembling. It's only going to be a few questions about what happened when your quirk activated. You don't have to give details if you don't want to. Just try to be honest, and if you can't or don't want to answer a question, all you have to do is say so. They aren't going to be mean to you, and I won't let them try and take you away. P promise? Tenko whimpers, gloved hands clutching his shirt in a vice. Raiden lets out a low rumble that was almost a purr, continuing to rub his back. Promise. Pinky promise even, he hums, smiling softly and offering his pinky to the kid. Tenko blinks at it a few times, but after a couple seconds he smiles shakily and hooks their pinkies together. Footsteps get Raiden's attention, and a young officer steps around the corner, looking at them. Storm Beast? With Tenko Shimura? He says, nodding when Raiden stands with Tenko still secure in his arms. I'm Officer Tsukachi. I'm going to be part of the interview today, nodding, Raiden follows the young man, vaguely wondering exactly how long he had been on the force. Probably not long, a year or two maybe. Raiden hadn't worked with him yet on any cases or villain attacks, at least not directly. He had a fairly plain face though, so it was possible they had met at least on a surface level in the past and he just didn't remember. Oh. Tenko was a nervous wreck as Raiden carried him down the halls towards the back of the police station. There wasn't anything overtly threatening about the building, but he was still terrified. It was hard enough to relive what he had done inside. His own head. He didn't think he could stomach talking about it. Not yet. Not now. He hoped that Raiden would be allowed to hold him the whole time, needing his steady warmth just so he didn't break down into a sobbing mess. Though with the way his eyes and throat itched, he might do that anyway. Hiding his face against Raiden's shoulder, he lets out a low whimper and is answered with the low, purring rumble the man had done before again. It was strangely comforting, like a giant cat, which went well with the see-in-the-dark cat eyes that he also had. Which was weird, cause his pupils resembled a goat, and a lot of his quirk features when he was doing hero work reminded him of a bat. A door is opened, Raiden pauses just long enough for it to swing wide, and Tenko flinches when it shuts behind them, whimpering, even though it didn't shut particularly loudly. Everything was too loud right now though, even the electric hum of the lights above them. His ears were ringing, his skull ached and his skin itched so bad it felt like it was on fire, but he refused to let go of Raiden to scratch at it. It feels like the man sits down, still holding him, and he can hear the vague shuffle of papers, a chair being pulled out and someone else sitting down. Good morning, Storm Beast. I'm Detective Kenji Tsurigami, woof. I'll be leading the interview today alongside Officer Tsukachi. Before we begin, I must inform you, woof, that this will be recorded, 
and that Officer Tsukachi's quirk allows him to detect lies. If you and the young man are comfortable with that, we shall proceed, a man's voice says, making Tenko jump at the beginning. <laughs> Blinking, Tenko finally picks his head up from Raiden's shoulder, turning around and looking at the men across from them. One was the plain-looking officer who had gotten them from the lobby. The man beside him was, Dog, he murmurs, before squeaking, flushing and pressing himself against Raiden, embarrassed and afraid. The man just smiles, not seeming upset or offended. Raiden gently pats his back, addressing the officers. I'm comfortable with it. Tenko, looking over at him, Tenko blinks oldishly, not sure how he should reply. But if Raiden was okay with it, I'm okay w with it too, he stammers. Excellent, woof. We shall proceed then. Tsurigami says, clasping his hands, his normal, human hands, together. If you both could, please state your names. Your hero name as well, he says, nodding towards Raiden with the last statement. Raiden Masayoshi. Hero name Storm Beast. Raiden replies immediately, looking at Tenko to prompt him to also answer. Vitenko. Shimura, he says, glancing at Tsukachi for any reaction. He has none, just watching them placidly, a notepad and pen in hand. How old are you, young Shimura? The dogman asks. Five. Were you born in Japan? Confused by this line of questions, Tenko tilts his head a little. Why yes, he asks, wincing as it comes out a question, but Tsukachi still doesn't react or make any notes. Tsurigami seems to smile, shifting in his seat. We need to establish a base for your answers for Tsukachi's quirk. Now then, these next questions might be hard for you. But do your best to answer them as fully as you can, swallowing thickly, Tenko leans back a little more against Raiden, who keeps a secure hold on him, helping ground him and making him feel safe and secure. What is your quirk? Tenko blinks, having really not given it much thought. Memories of shattered wood and a scattering of dust, ash, and blood assault him and he flinches, whimpering and trembling for a moment. Raiden rubs his back, rumbling gently until he collected himself, sniffling hard, eyes itchy and watery. W -h when I tt touch stuff w with all my fingers, they break, he murmurs. What do you mean by break? The dogman asks, his voice becoming much softer and more gentle. Tsukachi makes a brief note. They that dissolve. He turned Titi to dust, he stammers, shaking, reaching up to scratch at his neck before pausing, glancing at Raiden and forcing his hand to lower back to his lap. Raiden smiles gently at him, patting his back lightly. Would you mind demonstrating? Tsurigami asks, and Tenko's eyes go wide. Nothing big. Just an empty bottle, he says, reaching under the table and picking up said bottle, showing it to Tenko, who was shaking even harder now. Detective, I really don't see how that's necessary. Raiden cuts in, frowning hard, eyes narrowing at the two officers. His breath smelled like a thunderstorm, but Tenko felt safe, even as his skin tingles slightly like he had just shuffled his feet across the carpet and touched a piece of metal. The hero gets into a long staring contest with the detective before the dogman relents, and Tenko lets out a breath he didn't realize he had been holding. Very well. No demonstration is necessary, woof, the detective says, though he sounded a little disappointed. Tenko could only feel relief. He wasn't ready to use his quirk again. He knew he would have to eventually, especially if he wanted to be a hero. But that night, the breaking, the terror, it was all still so fresh in his mind. He didn't want to lose control again and hurt anyone. Never again. Young Shimura, what can you tell us about the night your quirk activated? Tenko's breath catches in his throat and tears well in his eyes with this question. His face felt hot, but the rest of him was cold, his gloved hands shaking and this time he can't stop himself from reaching up to scratch, only getting a couple in before Raiden stops him, letting him instead clutch his hand in a tight vice grip. He opens his mouth a couple times to talk, but closes it each time, his shaking renewed even with Raiden's secure grasp and steady presence. Each time he tried to form a thought to answer, he just saw the faces of his family in front of him again, scared or in father's case, furious. He remembers father hitting him with some tool. He remembers something inside him breaking, some feral animal taking over his body as he lunged at father and clutched his face, screaming, 
shrieking like a wild beast as father dissolved into nothing but dust. Scrambling out of Raiden's lap, Tenko stumbles over to a trash can in the corner and throws up all of his breakfast, coughing and choking. A warm hand finds his back, accompanied by the smell of thunderstorms and chocolate as the hero gently rubs between his shaking, heaving shoulders. Coughing and choking, retching into the can, Tenko also sobs, ugly, fat tears rolling from his eyes, wetting his entire face. The scratches he had left on himself burn from the salt in them, which only serves to make him cry more. He doesn't know how long he was bent over the can, coughing, retching, but his stomach didn't have anything left to offer, and it takes a long time for him to calm down. Raiden quietly offers him some water to rinse his mouth out with, which he eagerly does, spitting the bile water into the can as well, crawling into the hero's lap, exhausted, with tears still rolling down his face. He can feel the man's body shift as he stands, lifting Tenko with him, and they return to the table. I can tell you what I observed at the scene, the hero says quietly. Tenko jolts a little, realizing with horror that Raiden had seen what he had done. It makes him want to flee the room, but his legs wouldn't cooperate and move for him. Huh. How could Raiden have seen it and still say he could be a hero? It didn't make sense. He should be a villain. In the man's eyes, right? But, but he had seen it, and he still held Tenko close, he still comforted him, still let him sleep in his bed beside him for security. He didn't seem repulsed or afraid of his quirk or of Tenko. He just didn't understand it, his poor young mind utterly overloaded with everything that had happened to him in just a few days. Very well, tell us everything you can, Storm Beast, Wolf, the Dogman detective says. Tenko whimpers, shutting his eyes tightly and reaching up, covering his own ears, not wanting to hear the description of what was left of his house and family. But he also doesn't want to leave Raiden. That meant he'd be alone, and away from the hero. That meant that someone could come and take him away while Raiden was busy, and he wouldn't be able to cope with that. Not now. One of Raiden's hands reaches up to assist with blocking out his voice, covering his ear and hand on one side while Tenko plugs his other ear. All he hears is the deep murmur of the man's voice, keeping his eyes screwed shut, even with tears still freely flowing, and it seems to go on forever. He only opens his eyes and unplugs his ears when Raiden gently pats his head, and when he looks up, he's greeted with a tired but still kind smile. I'm done talking about it now, it's okay, the man says. Tenko nods shakily, whimpering quietly and resting his head back on his shoulder. Raiden shifts a little, leaning forward and sliding the envelope he had picked up at the agency across the table. I need this submitted as well. It's paperwork to activate me as Tenko's foster parent with the absence of suitable family or other guardians to take him in. Is this a temporary foster until better placement is found? Tsurigami asks, taking the envelope. Oh, I know myself better than that. This is a permanent foster request, with the eventual avenue leading to adoption. This makes Tenko's heart seize, and he sits up quickly, staring wide-eyed at the man, who simply smiles back at him. The boy felt so overwhelmed, so many emotions and thoughts bombarded him from every side, memories he wanted to forget beating at him from the edges of his mind. Now Raiden was saying he wanted to foster to adopt him? He wanted him, forever? He can't make his mouth move to ask the dozens of questions that surge up inside him, too exhausted and overwhelmed to speak right now. Very well. I'll get this submitted, woof. It seems like the young man is very attached to you already, which is good. Stability and security are what are going to be the most important thing for him now, the dog detective says. I believe that this interview can be soundly concluded. I need to have myself removed from the investigation into the incident as well. Though, with everything we discussed, I think it can be safely closed at this point. Yes, I agree. As tragic as it was, this was a case of a quirk manifestation raging out of control. Not unlike what happened to you, young Masayoshi, correct? Raiden shifts uncomfortably in his seat and sighs. Mine wasn't quite to this degree but it could have easily been. Because of how my quirk functions, there have also been people hurt by me even since then, even since I've been a hero when I lose control of myself. It's a problem I've never fully mastered, he hums shaking his head. When arrangements are made to bury the Shimuras, send the bill to me, and let me know where the gravestone will be. 
That way when Tenko is ready, he can visit his family. Tenko's breath hitches a little. He buries his face back in Raiden's shoulder, feeling him pat his back. Even if it takes you a decade or longer, Tenko, it'll be there for you. Okay? There's no need to rush into anything right now. I, I'm not in trouble, he asks, half muffled against skin and fabric. No, young Shimura, you aren't. However, I do highly recommend therapy to give him tools to cope with this incident. Surigami says, addressing Tenko first and then directing the rest at Raiden, who gives a simple hum of agreement. That being said, I do believe we are done here. However, should you have questions or need anything from us, don't be afraid to reach out. Tenko feels Raiden nod, then the man stands, turning and carrying Tenko out of the room, escorted as far as the front of the building by the two officers. Once they step outside into the cool, damp air, the boy feels like he can finally take a full breath, a shudder of relief going through him. He really was staying with Raiden. He wasn't getting taken or put in jail. He could stay with the hero who had rescued him, who told him he could also be a hero. Shifting, he wraps his arms around the man's neck, head resting on one side of his head, and Raiden chuckles. See? I told you it would be okay. Now then, I know you're tired, but we really do need to get you some more clothes. Some toys, too. When we get home, you can sit with me and we'll order some things for your room online. It can I still sleep with you, though? Tenko asks, scratchy voice sounding as tired as he felt. Raiden nods, and relief rushes through him. He didn't know when he would be okay sleeping alone again. The constant spiral of his thoughts and emotions was hard to manage, and he was afraid of the nightmares, too. But as long as Raiden was okay with it, he was glad he had someone to hold him through the night. Can, can I get some hero toys? He nearly whispers, wanting to instinctively shrink away from the question or Raiden's potential reaction, memories of father's furious eyes surging to the surface. Of course, as many as you want, the response cuts through the residual terror inside Tenko, and he lets out a breath. Clothes first though. That's the important stuff. Tenko was half asleep by the time they reached the open-air mall, yawning and stretching in the back seat when Raiden parks and shuts the car off. He decides to walk, at least for the time being, holding Raiden's hand as they head into the large complex. The man didn't seem like he was being recognized very much, the button-up he was wearing over his hero uniform top, plus not having any of the features of his quirk visible, making him look like just another person. He usually went around at least partially transformed, from what little Tenko had been able to watch in secret, away from father's glare, so his normal guy's appearance wasn't as well known. Part of Tenko was glad about that. It felt like something that was special for him, and he wasn't sure how he would handle all the attention that would probably also be focused on him while being focused on Raiden. The attention of the police officers had been intimidating enough, and he was very tired. It wasn't even lunchtime yet and he wanted to crawl into bed and sleep. Raiden locates a children's clothing store and they head inside. He lets go of Tenko's hand and tells him to take the lead, following along behind him as the boy looked at all the shirts and pants, a basket held in one hand. While Tenko is examining various shirts, Raiden grabs a couple packs each of underwear and socks that looked like they would fit the boy, dropping them in the basket. He blinks when the boy pulls out a shirt hanging on a rack that had a depiction of himself on it in his usual half-form surrounded by lightning, smiling when Tenko grins up at him. If you want it, you can have it. Hold on, let me see the size of the shirt you're wearing. Turning the boy around, he folds back the collar of it, looking at the size of the shirt and nodding. Grab one a size. Lower than this one. You want one number lower on the tag, see? He hums, showing Tenko, who blinks and then nods. Once the right size is grabbed, Tenko notices that the shirts in this section were all that size and starts rummaging through them. Soon he's got an All Might shirt, a Gang Orca one, a Death Arms one, two other various pros, and three more of Raiden's pro persona, getting more and more excited with each one he's allowed to grab, while the hero gets some plain shirts or non-hero related graphic tees to go with them, putting them in his basket. Raiden also checks the size of the shorts he was wearing, grabbing a few pairs of new ones in a few different colors, as well as some full-length pants, folding them over his arm for Tenko to try on to make sure they fit him right. After that, they head over to the shoe section of the store, 
the man standing back and letting Tenko examine the selection of shoes for himself, looking at a rack of gloves himself, picking up a pair of purple ones, white ones, brown ones, and red ones to modify later. That way Tenko had a variety. By the time he's put them in his basket, Tenko has grabbed a box of shoes that had a pair of black and purple tennis shoes in it to try on, carrying it over to the bench in the section and plopping himself down on it, pulling one of his own shoes off. Raiden lets him be independent, though he does watch carefully, feeling a little pride when the right shoe goes on the right foot on the first try. Though he shouldn't really be surprised. Tenko was five, not two. When he sees Tenko frown once the shoe is on though, he makes his way over. Too big or too small? He asks, setting his basket down beside the boy and crouching in front of him. Big, he replies, wiggling his foot a bit, watching the shoe flop around a bit. Looks like you grabbed a couple sizes too big. Pull it off, I'll get it back in the box. Grab a box two numbers lower and try those, he says, taking the shoe when it's offered to him. Stuffing the paper back inside and folding in the laces, he puts it in the box properly and slides it back onto the shelf while Tenko examines the numbers on the boxes carefully. It takes him a moment, but soon he grabs the right one and brings it back to the bench. This time, when he tries it on, it seems to fit right. Raiden has him stand and put his weight on that foot, feeling where his toes stopped and nodding. Perfect. If you want a second pair, just make sure its number matches the one on these shoes. That's not too much? Tenko asks, blinking at him with wide, red eyes. Raiden was relieved though that he looked like he was enjoying himself, the stress from the police interview forgotten for the time being. The boy gives a broad, toothy grin when Raiden shakes his head, yanking the shoe off and scurrying over to the wall of shoes with only one on. Chuckling, Raiden puts it in its box and sets the box next to the basket, sitting on the bench to watch the boy. After a few minutes, he selected some All Might themed shoes in the same size and comes scurrying over, grinning wide. You really like All Might, huh, kiddo? Raiden laughs, to which the boy nods. Aha, uh -huh. he's so cool. Oh, but you're cool too, he says, blinking guiltily at him, prompting him to laugh. I appreciate that. My merch isn't as common though, even though I'm pretty high ranked. I haven't been in the hero business long enough to have a lot. To me, it feels like All Might has been around forever. He's been a hero longer than I've been alive. Tenko giggles a little at this, setting the All Might shoe box on top of the other one, pausing a little with a thoughtful frown on his face. I don't like Endeavor as much though. He's always glaring. It's kinda scary. He can be pretty scary. I've worked with him a few times. He's a great hero but his people skills could use some work. Raiden chuckles, feeling like he was being a little too charitable to the number two hero. He was an incredible hero, that much couldn't be argued. But his temperament was probably one of the worst that Raiden had had the displeasure of dealing with up close and personal. Aggressive and behaving like he was superior to everyone and everything put it lightly. If this is all you wanted from here, we can go check out. Then we'll go to a toy store and get you a few things. Tenko lights up, bouncing in place with his mismatched shoes, and he's quick to yank the All Might one off and put his old shoe back on though he has a little trouble with the laces. Having him put his foot on the bench, Raiden shows him how to tie them properly, and they then head to the counter. A few minutes and perhaps a little too much money later, they're walking out of the clothing store, Tenko proudly carrying the box that had his All Might shoes in them, Raiden carrying the bags of clothing and the other box of shoes. Raiden felt vaguely like he had been scalped. The hero-themed clothing items had been nearly double the price of the regular tees and shoes. Something about that felt like price gouging, and it was only after he had swiped his credit card that he had remembered heroes got discounts at most stores. He had decided not to bring it up, but he was definitely using it at the toy store. No sooner do they step through the doors of the toy store is the shoe box in Tenko's hands being shoved at him and the boy takes off nearly at a run over to the section of hero action figures. Shaking his head, amused, Raiden trails after him to keep an eye on the five-year-old, glad to see him acting like a five-year-old. Tenko's eyes nearly sparkled as he took in all the hero toys, from plastic action figures to plushies, book bags, pencil cases, the works. Much of it was all Might and Endeavor themed, which was only right considering they were the top two heroes and incredibly popular. There was a fairly even spread of the other more popular heroes too, including himself. 
He had never really paid much attention to the children's merchandise side of his job, so it was odd to see a round, soft, squishy plush of his beast form staring up at him from a shelf, looking not nearly as threatening as it actually was. Tenko spots it too and snatches it up right away, holding it up to him with a begging look in his eyes. Blinking a couple times, he relents with a sigh and nods. All right, take it easy though. I have two hands and can only carry so much. We can always come back another day to get you more, he says, chuckling as Tenko nods furiously, clutching the plush close like someone was going to take it from him, eagerly scanning the rest of the shelves. All told, he ends up with an action figure of All Might, Endeavor, Raiden's half-form in beast form, the beast form plush, an All Might plush shaped vaguely like a pill bug, and a blanket with crust on it. Once his little arms couldn't hold any more, Raiden herds him towards the counter, helping him put his things up on it, and this time showing his hero license to the cashier, who had the sense to not make a big deal out of a pro standing in front of him. Once the toys are rung up and the discount is applied, Raiden pays, telling Tenko to carry the bags, his own hands full with the shoe boxes and clothing bags. The child doesn't even seem to notice the weight of the bags as he nearly skips beside Raiden, following him back towards the parking lot to put the bags in the trunk of the car. After that, they'd find some lunch to eat and head home. They had just gotten everything in the trunk and shut it when Raiden hears the sound of an engine failing to turn over a few spaces away. Straightening, he looks over, seeing an older car that had seen somewhat better days, the door open and the hood up, and a moment later a small woman with dark green hair stands up out of the car, looking distraught. Patting Tenko's head, he motions for him to follow, making his way over, waving to the woman, who he can see was fairly pregnant as he steps around her car. Excuse me, miss. Are you having car trouble? He asks, smiling lightly at her. She jumps at his voice and looks a little wary as he approaches, so he stops, pulling his wallet out and showing her his hero license, smile still in place. It's all right, I just want to help. If your battery is dead, I can charge it for you, he offers, noting Tenko squirm a little beside him, seeming excited to see him do something heroic, even if it was just jump-starting a car. But, I couldn't bother you with that. It's no trouble at all, miss. I'm happy to help. Raiden replies, meaning every word of it as she fidgets nervously. She fidgets nervously for a moment, then her shoulders droop and she nods, not having many other options in front of her. Okay, how? How are you going to charge the battery? She asks, blinking large eyes up at him. With my quirk. It'll be easier than jumping it with my own car. Do you have jumper cables? I in my trunk. Pop it for me? When she does, Raiden retrieves the cables, motioning for Tenko to step back a couple paces. Hooking the cables to the battery and a grounding spot, he pulls on his quirk, the freckles on his face turning into their usual black mask as he transforms himself a little, his nails growing a little sharper as well. He didn't need much but he did need a little more electricity than what he could generate passively. Taking the other end of the cables in his hands, he focuses his power into the metal, purple sparks popping from between his fingers as he charges the battery, eyes gleaming a little. After about 30 seconds, he looks at the woman. All right, try turning it over now, he says. It takes two tries, but on the second, the engine finally turns over and the car comes to life. Letting go of the cables, he takes them off the battery and closes the hood of her car, winding the cables and passing them to Tenko, who had been watching with stars in his eyes. Put this back for the nice lady, would you please? He nods furiously, taking them and hurrying to the back of the car, putting them back in their spot, but he can't quite reach the trunk lid to close it, so he rejoins the two adults quickly. Thank you, Mr. Storm Beast. I appreciate your help. Please, call me Raiden and it was my pleasure. If you don't mind, I'd like to follow you to your destination, just to make sure your car doesn't die on you again. If you're not comfortable with that though, I understand, the hero says, his face and nails returning to normal, his warm smile still in place. Oh, I was heading home anyway. If it's no trouble, you can follow me. An, my name is Inko. Inko Midoriya. Raiden nods, shutting her trunk for her and ushering Tenko back to the car sliding into it and waiting for Inko to pull out, pulling behind her and following her back towards her home. Tenko in the back seat was nearly vibrating in place, a huge grin on his face. It wasn't much but that's a large part of being a hero. 
helping those in need in small, simple ways. Jump-starting a car, helping carry heavy groceries home, retrieving stuck cats from trees. It's the small acts that are done for the citizens that often resonate much more than the huge, grand battles. It lets them know that you care about them, and not just the fame or power that comes with being a pro. Raiden says, seeing Tenko nodding along in the rear view, absorbing every word he said, all the anxiety and stress from that morning seeming to have melted away with his excitement. So cool, the little boy says in an excited whine, squirming in place. I'm glad you think so. You'll do little things like that one day too, if you pursue being a hero through the end of high school. But it's never too early to think about all the ways you can help people, even if it's just to lend an ear or take some time to talk to them. Sometimes all people need is a sympathetic ear. Tenko nods along, grinning broadly. The drive was a little long, about 20 minutes with and without traffic, but soon Inko turns into the parking area for an apartment complex, pulling into a spot, while Raiden pulls into a spot a few spaces down. Getting out, opening the door for Tenko to climb out as well, he makes his way over to her, stopping her from grabbing any of her groceries. No, Miss Midoriya, let us help you. Especially if you have to go upstairs, he says quickly, grabbing up a couple bags, passing a couple light ones to Tenko when the boy holds his hands up to take a few too. That's very kind of you, thank you. Oh, and what's your name, young man? She asks, smiling down at Tenko, who grins back. Tenko, I just started living with Mr. Raiden last night. He's so cool and nice, the boy nearly crows. Hearing it out of a child's mouth, the living arrangement probably sounded strange, but Inko didn't seem to want an elaboration, though she does cast a look up at the hero, who smiles placidly in return. Really, he does seem like a very nice man. I'm having a little boy myself, and I hope I'm able to raise him to be a gentleman just like you are. She nearly coos to Tenko, her smile warm and very maternal. It seems to melt the child a little, who nods, stiffening his chin a bit and standing up a little straighter, both puffing up under her praise and trying to look more grown. Chuckling, Raiden grabs the rest of the bags in his hands, stepping back so Inko can close the trunk, following her up to the second floor of one of the buildings. It was a little awkward entering a stranger's home, especially when he steps into the entry, clumsily towing his shoes off in the entry and glancing around, seeing no evidence that another man lived here. Did she not have a husband? It didn't matter, he supposed, placing the bags down in the kitchen when she directs him to, setting them on table so she wouldn't have to bend down to empty them. I hope it's not too much to ask, but would you and Tenko like to stay for lunch? It's the least I could do for all your help, the woman says, tilting her head a little at the pair of them. Oh no, we couldn't impose dashed, he starts to say, cutting himself off when she gives him a suddenly stern look. Uh, you took the time and energy to help me with my car and groceries, it's the least I can do to feed the two of you. It's not imposing if it's offered, she says, shaking one finger at him, and Raiden vaguely wonders what it was about him that made women like this around him. All, stern and motherly. He hesitates for a long moment, before a tug on his shirt gets his attention and he looks down at Tenko, who was nodding eagerly. Can we stay? She's really nice, he asks, and Raiden can't say no to the large, red puppy eyes that he gives him, letting out a defeated sigh. Very well. We'd be happy to stay, Miss Midoriya. Thank you for having us, he concedes, figuring that they had planned to go get lunch soon anyway. Plus, it had been a while since he had had a home-cooked meal, so really he wasn't complaining. But he does insist that he and Tenko help at least unbag all of her items laying them out on the table in a vaguely organized fashion for Inko to put away. Then, they're sternly told to take a seat at the table while she whipped up a quick lunch of stir-fry noodles and beef. The smells of the home-cooked meal soon fill the kitchen, and Raiden is transported for a moment back to a simpler time, remembering his mother cooking similar meals for him whenever his father was out of town. Those moments were some of the happiest of his life, so he was content to savor this one too, with Tenko at his side, wiggling happily in place, having not scratched at his neck or face once in the last several hours, Tenko idly kicks his feet as he watches Miss Inko cook, seated in a chair beside Raiden, who seemed lost in thought. He was still riding a high from their shopping trip, excited to get back to Raiden's house and put his new stuff in the room Raiden said would be his. He had been allowed to get hero merch. 
a lot of it, and Raiden hadn't seemed upset in the least about it. He didn't even seem upset when Tenko had talked about how much he liked All Might. He wondered if he'd be allowed to get hero-themed sheets and curtains too, or if that would be too much. All of it was so exciting, and it felt like a dream. A really, really good one. He barely remembered the horrid anxious feeling he had woken up with and struggled with at the police station. It had been crushing, all the fear and uncertainty. Now it was already becoming a distant memory. Looking at Miss Inko closely, he wonders at the perfectly round bump on her belly. She had said she was having a little boy, but he didn't really know what exactly that meant, and he wondered if it would be rude to ask. So, he doesn't. Raiden had been treating her rather delicately, too, not seeming to want to let her lift anything too heavy. Maybe she was sick? He couldn't tell, but Raiden did have a really good nose, plus he was an adult. He could see and understand things that Tenko didn't yet, so he trusted the hero to know what was best. Before long, a bowl of stir-fried noodles and beef was being set down in front of both Raiden and Tenko, as well as a glass of juice for each, and Miss Inko was sitting across from them with her own. Tenko had to sit up on his knees to properly reach, swaying a bit when Raiden slides his chair closer to the table, grinning at the man. Thank you for the meal, the hero hums, addressing their host, who smiles gently. She had a really pretty smile, Tenko notes. Even if she wasn't showing teeth, it was still bright and friendly, not the tired and strained smile his own mama often had on her face. Physically shaking away those thoughts with a shake of his head, not wanting to make himself sad or panic again, Tenko takes his first bite of his lunch. Mm. This is really good Miss Inko, he praises, making sure not to talk with his mouthful. That was rude after all. Why thank you Tenko? I try my best, she replies with a gentle laugh. They eat in comfortable silence for a few minutes before she looks up at Raiden, seeming curious. So, little Tenko just started living with you? Is he your son? She asks, to which Raiden shakes his head. No, ma'am. There was an incident and he has no family able to take him, so I'm fostering him. Not that I plan to let him go anytime soon, it's pretty safe to say we've gotten rather attached to each other already, the hero replies, his odd green eyes a little sad, and Tenko can feel a knot of emotion wind itself up in his chest as well. He missed his family so much, but he had also been happier in the last 24 hours, even with all the moments of fear and panic, than he had been in a long time. Raiden was kind and caring, warm and gentle. He allowed Tenko to express his love for heroes, and didn't make fun of him for his fluctuating emotional state. He just held him until those moments passed. Oh, I'm so sorry. But it's good that you were able to take him in. I don't know much about you as a person, Raiden, but I have seen a lot of your hero work on the news. To me, it seems you're a good person, and a good fit to take in a lost little boy. Miss Inko says, her pretty smile a little sad as well as she looks at Tenko. The boy squirms a little, contemplating a piece of beef with his teeth for a moment before swallowing it and looking at her. It's been hard and scary but… Mr. Raiden is really nice, and he's been taking good care of me. We got me a bunch of new clothes today, and new toys. He even let me get a bunch of hero stuff. I was never allowed to have that before, he says, grinning wide at the end of it. Plus he knew right away how to keep my quirk from hurting anyone. See, holding up his gloved hands, he wiggles the fingers that were covered by the fabric. Miss Inko blinks, and Raiden chuckles, patting Tenko on the head with a fond smile. His quirk is touch-activated, but needs all five fingers. It's pretty strong and he only just manifested it, so the gloves are there to help keep it under control until I can train him. Oh I see. That's very smart. Miss Inko replies with a small giggle. Are you going to be a hero when you grow up, Tenko? She asks, her green eyes going bright as Tenko nearly blinds her with a smile, furiously nodding his head. Aha! Uh -huh. I've always wanted to be one, and Mr. Raiden says that even with my quirk I can be a good hero. So that's what I'm gonna be. I wanna save people who are scared and lost like I was, like how Mr. Raiden did for me, he crows, resisting popping to his feet in his chair, not wanting to be rude. Raiden taps his bowl lightly, reminding him to also eat, so he takes a couple more bites before continuing. It's been hard and scary, the last few days. But, it's not as scary anymore, even if I don't know much about what to do next. But I'm living with a hero now. So I know I'll be safe. 
We've both got a lot to learn in the near future. Raiden chuckles softly, taking a couple bites of his own food. I've known since I was about his age that I wanted kids, I just never expected to end up with a kid in this way. But, I'm not complaining. I've got a lot I need to figure out, though. School, doctors, working my own schedule around his needs. Things like that. I won't be able to take time off from my work forever, a week at most is all I can allow myself. After that, I need to figure out who's going to watch Tenko during the day. Miss Inko nods along to this, seeming to be thinking about something, tilting her head to one side. That's a hard position to be in. Plus, you can't trust just anyone these days to watch over young children. Especially if they have extra needs, she says, drawing a small sigh of agreement out of Raiden. She hesitates for a few seconds before leveling the hero with a serious look. I know we just met each other, but if you ever need help with little Tenko, I'd be happy to lend a hand. After all, you didn't hesitate to help me, so it's the least I can do to return the favor. Oh, no no I couldn't. I mean, you're going to be having a baby soon yourself. I wouldn't want to add any undue stress to you. Raiden replies, eyes going wide as he shakes his head, though he stops as Miss Inko levels that same stern look at him that had gotten him to agree to lunch. It's no stress at all to help a child. I'm pregnant, not infirm. Besides, my husband is working overseas for the foreseeable future, so it's just me in the house and it would be nice to have some company from time to time. If you're nervous about me, you can do a background check on me, she says, in what Tenko would describe as a mom voice. Which was strange. He didn't see any toys laying around, so she didn't have any other kids. Maybe some women just had that built in? Or maybe she was practicing for when her baby got here. Whatever it was, it seems to be working on Raiden, who deflates after a small amount of further protesting with a small squeaking noise that didn't sound quite human. At least let me pay you for your time? He half grumbles, avoiding eye contact with the woman. And when your baby is born, if it gets to be too much, you have to tell me and I'll make other arrangements. My agency has a daycare, I just want to save it as a last resort because it's a bit chaotic and I don't want to stress Tenko out too much. He's been through enough in the last week. Tenko tilts his head a little, contemplating this adult conversation quietly. It was a lot, he knew that much. He knew that Raiden had to go back to work pretty soon, he was a hero after all. Other people needed him besides Tenko. He hadn't really thought about what that would mean though. It wasn't like he would be allowed to be at the house by himself. That made him wonder if he agreed to let Miss Inko watch him, if he would come here to her apartment, or if she would come to Raiden's house. He didn't know exactly how far away Raiden's house was from here though, and whatever pregnancy meant must have been something to do with her health, so Raiden might not want her driving that much. So that left coming here, right? Raiden had also brought up school. The new year was starting soon, but Tenko wasn't sure if he was ready for a school setting yet. The incident, the breaking, had only happened a few days ago, and his mind was still all over the place. Even he could say that much. He didn't want to be around a bunch of other kids who could be loud and chaotic and get in his business yet. He didn't know what other options he had though, or if Raiden would let him start late, wait until he was ready. He's brought out of his thoughts by a tap on the top of his head, blinking a couple times and looking up at Raiden, who smiles a little. Where'd you go, pup? He asks, to which Tenko cocks his head. Nowhere? I'm right here, he says, a little confused. No, I'm in your mind. Looks like your thoughts trailed off a little. You okay? The hero clarifies, relaxing a little when Tenko nods, satisfied with that answer and not pushing for details. Good. Miss Midoriya and I were discussing a little. When I have to go back to hero work, I'll bring you over here first thing in the morning, and she'll keep you until the evening time. When you start school, she'll pick you up from wherever I'm able to get you in and watch you until I'm done with work for the day. Is that okay with you? Tenko contemplates this for a little while. He didn't really know Miss Inko, but then again he had also only just met Raiden too. He already trusted and liked the hero, and if Raiden trusted Miss Inko, he guessed he could do it too. So, he nods, smiling a little. Okay, that's okay. Thank you Miss Inko, he says, reminding himself to be polite. You're very welcome, Tenko. I look forward to having you. We'll discuss further details later. And it'll be about a week before I'll need you to keep him, so if you change your mind, call me. 
It's really no trouble and it won't upset me, Raiden says, looking like he felt guilty a little. And it's no trouble to keep him. Truly. I wouldn't have offered if it was, she replies firmly, seeming to deflate Raiden a little with her firm, sure words. All the hero can manage is a nod. Once lunch is finished, Miss Inko packs the leftovers into a Tupperware box and passes it to Raiden, ignoring his weak protesting and insisting he take it for him and Tenko to have for lunch tomorrow. The hero gives in, and he and the woman exchange numbers to talk details about babysitting Tenko later. Soon, they're back in Raiden's car and heading back towards his home, Tenko holding the warm box of leftovers in his lap in the back seat. Raiden? He eventually speaks up, voice feeling and sounding small. Do I have to start school right away? He asks, shrinking in his seat a little, wondering if this was the thing that was finally going to get the other mad at him. But Raiden just lets out a breath that smelled of ozone, brow furrowing as he thinks, watching the road ahead quietly. Well, not if you're not ready. Before the school year starts though, I plan to set you up an appointment with a doctor to see about your allergies and check on your health in general. Plus, I need to get you in to see a therapist. What's a therapist? A therapist is a special kind of doctor. They don't take care of things like colds or cuts, but instead they help what's going on inside your mind. You went through something scary and terrible, and you can't keep it all inside forever. So, the best thing to do is talk to a therapist, who can help you learn how to cope with the things that happened. They can teach you ways to calm yourself down when you start to panic, or ways to make the bad memories a little quieter. Things like that. I had to see one for a few years myself, after my parents died. Oh, but I couldn't even tell the police about, about it. Or you, I know. You won't be expected to just open up and talk all about it the first time you sit down with them. It'll be a long-term thing, probably over at least a year, if not longer. It depends on what you need. That's the sort of thing we'll play by ear. Raiden replies offering him a small smile in the rear-view mirror that helps Tenko relax a little. Will you be able to be with me? The boy asks. If you want. I'll definitely do my best to be. I'm sure I could work my schedule around any appointments. I'll need to, in fact, since I'm your guardian. Nodding, soothed by this, Tenko looks out the window, watching the gray sky roll by, blinking a bit when a couple raindrops land on the window as it finally begins raining after being gloomy all day long. Tenko wasn't sure what he felt about the rain. It had rained a lot while he had been lost and scared, making it cold and damp, especially at night where he had huddled up with whatever he could find to cover himself and shivered through the night. But, it had also rained yesterday, when Raiden had rescued him and brought him home. It had rained all night, while he had been held and comforted by the hero, and now it was raining again, after he had been allowed to buy things that he liked, and met such a nice person in Misinko. Good things and bad things had happened on rainy days. It left him a little conflicted about it. But luckily Raiden had a garage to pull into when they get home, because the rain was truly coming down by the time they pull into the driveway. He was surprised Tenko was still awake after the busy morning he had had, the boy hopping out of the back seat as soon as the door was opened. He follows Raiden around to the trunk, grabbing his Storm Beast plush and carrying it and the leftovers to the side door, the hero behind him with a couple of the bags of clothes. Put the leftovers on the counter here. I'll put them away later, he instructs, waiting for he boy to do so and rejoin him. Then, he takes him upstairs and into the guest room, flipping the light on. I need to change the sheets and air it out a little, I don't exactly get many guests. But, this will be your room from now on, he says, smiling as Tenko moves around the room, his plush clutched to his chest as he examines the large, comfortable bed, the dresser that doubled as a TV stand against the opposite wall, and the sliding glass doors that led out to a small balcony. He also had a small walk-in closet, and Raiden planned to get him a desk and chair, and some shelves to put toys and collectibles on. We'll sit down once everything is put away and you can help me pick out some things online to order, really make the room your own. Anything you want, within reason of course, I'll be happy to get it for you. Tenko nods, stretching up on his tiptoes to reach the middle of the bed, setting his plush down against he pillows, lightly patting it, while Raiden sets the bags in his hand on the foot of the bed. It takes another trip, Tenko carrying what he could, but soon they had all of Tenko's clothes and toys upstairs, and while the boy busied himself with his toys, Raiden sets to work hanging up his clothes in the closet. 
The underwear and socks went into a drawer inside the closet, and then the shirts went on one rack and the pants and shorts on another. He makes a note to also buy Tenko a couple jackets, since there were still plenty of chilly days with it only just being spring. When he steps out of the closet, he smiles when he sees that the boy had spread the action figures across the nightstand, and then the two plushes and the blanket had been arranged on the bed. The room will be all your own before you know it, he says, laughing when the boy nods energetically. Aha, uh -huh. can, can I get some hero sheets and curtains too, he asks, lighting up when Raiden nods his consent, bouncing in place, overflowing with energy and excitement. You can plaster this whole room with hero stuff if you want to. It's up to you and I don't mind. Raiden chuckles, basking in the blinding smile that was being sent his way. Now then, you need a bath. Is that something you can do on your own, or are you going to need help? He hums, looking the boy's still rather dirty form over. Mm. I can do it, but I might need help with my hair. I can never get all the soap out. Tenko replies, squirming a little, brow furrowing as he looks down at his hands. What about the gloves? I'll have to take them off to wash myself. What if, what if I break something with my quirk? He asks nervously, red eyes a little watery. Raiden steps up to him, crouching down to get on his level and taking one of his little hands. Then we replace it or fix it. But here's the thing about quirks, they're yours. You aren't the quirks. It's yours to control, not the other way around. Which I know sounds like a scary thing to manage right now. But, you'll learn, even if it's by breaking a lot of stuff. But what if one of those things is you? Tenko whimpers, looking up at Raiden, expression drawn with fear. It won't be. I'm not worried one bit about you hurting me. Here's something you can try, and something to make a habit for when you don't have any gloves on. Always try to remember to keep one finger up. It can be your pinky, your thumb, any finger you want. Remember, your quirk only activates if all of your fingers touch something, right? So it can't do anything if only three or four are touching something. Tenko blinks a few times at him seeming to try and will away his tears before taking a breath and nodding firmly. Sending him to go pick out some clothes to change into, Raiden steps into the bathroom that was across the hall, setting the water to be nice and warm and then plugging the tub up, stepping into his own master bathroom and grabbing a bottle of shampoo and body wash and a towel. He needed to make a list of things to pick up for in the bathroom for the boy too. Toothbrush and paste, soap, towels, so on. He also needed to find the bomb that Yuri had suggested. Tomorrow. That was a tomorrow problem. Today had been busy enough. They'd make do with what they had for tonight. When Tenko returns, he's got the Storm Beast shirt that he had picked out first at the store, as well as one of the pairs of shorts and a clean pair of underwear. Raiden helps him out of his dirty clothes, but the boy resists a little when he gets to his gloves, whimpering and pulling his hand back when Raiden tries to pull one off. Tenko. I promise, it'll be okay, he says gently, holding his hand out for Tenko's hand. When Tenko shakes his head, eyes welling with tears again, Raiden lets out a slow breath, crouching in front of him. Do you want me to wash you this time? That way you don't have to touch anything. The boy squirms a little, fidgeting with his fingers, clearly scared and unsure. But, after a few moments, he nods, giving Raiden a pitiful, begging look. He lets Raiden pull the gloves off and then lift him into the tub, setting him down into the warm water. Using a washcloth to wet the boy's body, he uses a cup to wet his hair down and then sets to work soaping him up. Tenko sits still, closing his eyes to keep soap out of them, hands in his laps, palms up to absolutely avoid touching anything and potentially turning it to dust. Absently, Raiden notes that it seemed like water wasn't affected by it, since both of the boy's hands were fully submerged so it must only be solid objects that could be dusted by the quirk. Soon, Tenko is squeaky clean, his previously dull silver-blue hair now nice and clean, and Raiden lifts him out of the tub, wrapping him in a towel and setting to drying him up, while Tenko did everything he could to keep his fingers away from the fabric in Raiden's body. Once he's dressed, Raiden steps out and grabs the purple pair of gloves from the boy's room, cutting two of the fingers off each like he had done the black ones returning to the bathroom and sliding them onto Tenko's hands. The child relaxes visibly when his hands were secured, then he looks up at Raiden, holding his hands up to be picked up. I want to see how I look in my new hero shirt, he says, a smile fighting its way onto his scarred lips. 
Raiden is only too happy to comply, lifting him up and holding him in front of the bathroom mirror. But instead of overflowing with joy, he feels Tenko jolt in his arms, leaning suddenly forward, examining himself very closely in the mirror. What, what happened to me? He almost wails, pulling at the skin around his eyes and then at his hair a little, eyes wide and distressed. What do you mean? Raiden asks, confused about why he was so upset. My eyes. And my hair. They're both supposed to be dark. Tenko cries, pulling harder on his hair. Raiden untangles his fingers before he can pull some out, brow furrowing. Well, I know that sometimes people's appearances change when their quirks manifest. My eyes changed too when mine appeared. They used to be just normal people eyes, but after my quirk appeared I got the purple ring and the sideways pupils, he hums, pulling Tenko back from the mirror a little so he wasn't almost falling out of his arms anymore. I also know that sometimes when someone goes through something particularly stressful or terrifying, it can make their hair turn white. So, maybe it's a combination of that. You did experience something horrible after all. Tenko sniffles, still staring wide-eyed at his reflection, having a hard time coming to terms with the change. Raiden was surprised he hadn't caught his reflection in anything since the incident, but considering he was doing his best to just survive, he doubted that preening himself had been a priority. I look weird, the boy murmurs, a couple tears rolling down his cheeks. Raiden gently wipes them away, turning Tenko around and sitting him on the counter, taking his chin and tilting his head back, smiling at him. I don't think so. You're a very cute and handsome little boy, he assures, brushing some of Tenko's bangs back. Tenko sniffles, looking dubious, so rather than continue to try and convince him, Raiden rummages around in the drawers under the sink, eventually producing a brush. Turning Tenko, he brushes out his damp hair for a few minutes to keep it from tangling, stepping back and smiling at him. There now, besides looking different, how do you feel now that you're clean and in clean clothes? He hums as Tenko goes back to staring at himself in the mirror. A few long seconds go by as Tenko thinks, frowning at his reflection hard and then turning to look at Raiden. I feel a lot better. Not as itchy, he says, though he immediately contradicts himself by scratching at his elbow. He pauses, realizing this as well and smiles a little sheepishly. Well, not any more than I normally am, he corrects, pulling his hand away from scratching and holding his hands up to Raiden again, who picks him up, carrying him out of the bathroom and back downstairs, grabbing his laptop from the kitchen island and bringing it and the boy to the couch. Are we gonna look at stuff for my room? Sure are. Tomorrow after breakfast we'll go out to the grocery store and a pharmacy to pick up some stuff for the kitchen and your bathroom. I want to try and find the tea tree bomb Yuri mentioned to me and see if that helps with your itchy skin too. Tenko nods, leaning up against Raiden's side as he opens his laptop up and starts browsing websites that had things like sheets and furniture and so on. He saves things that Tenko points out that he liked, and after they had a good selection, they go back and he has him narrow it down a little, promising him to get him more things over time. Once they had a couple sheet sets, some curtains, a handful of posters, as well as a new desk, chair, a couple new lamps, and some shelves picked out, Raiden pays, selecting next day shipping while he was at it, letting out a breath. You're gonna make me go broke, kid, he teases, tickling Tenko's side so he knew he wasn't being serious, grinning as the boy squeals and tries to squirm away. Now then, we still have a lot of day left. What do you want to do with it? Oh, can we watch a movie? Tenko asks, and Raiden was glad to see him smiling again after the bath incident. Getting up without complaint, Raiden grabs his binders of movies, which ranged from comedy to drama to horror. The horror ones were his personal favorites, but that wasn't exactly kid-friendly. Plus, Tenko had witnessed enough horror this week. So he flips to the back, where he had a handful of more childish movies, a few animated ones and some hero ones. As soon as Tenko sees the hero movies, he points to them, grinning wide and Raiden laughs, pulling the first one out to put in the player, sitting back on the couch with the boy. It seemed he was taking full advantage of being allowed to openly like heroes now, and he wasn't about to squash that. Ugh. They watch three movies, though halfway through the third one, Tenko falls asleep. That was alright though, it was getting late anyway. He rouses only a little when Raiden picks him up and carries him upstairs curling into the hero and quickly falling back to sleep. 
The barely twitches as he's laid in the bed with the hero climbing in next to him after changing into sleep clothes, body and mind both exhausted. However, he doesn't sleep peacefully the whole night. At around midnight, the nightmares come back, worse than the night before. This time, Raiden and Miss Inko were in them too, their echoing screams scraping at his ears as they dissolve into dust and blood. While Tenko can do nothing but watch in pure, abject horror, hands outstretched, coated in red mud made of the remains of his family, and the two people who had shown him kindness since the breaking. He wails, a guttural animal-like shriek of pure terror and despair, clawing at the dirt, like he could somehow piece them back together with dirt and twigs. He hears a voice, distant and muffled, calling what he thought was his name, but he can't make it out or respond to it. The ground around his knees was cracking, the edges dissolving into little more than sand, before suddenly giving way, dropping him into a black abyss. Floundering and flailing, Tenko screams, choking on spit and sobs, the reek of blood and death clogging his nose, his skin itching and burning as he clawed at his neck with one hand, his other flailing around in the darkness, desperate to grab onto anything. He gasps when a large, warm hand grasps his, and he's being yanked upwards, eyes flying open in the darkness of the bedroom as he's suddenly sitting up. He was confused and still sobbing, looking around with wide, scared eyes before spotting Raiden, who was sitting up next to him, glowing eyes wide as he held Tenko's hand tightly, his other hand rested on his back. Tenko, it's all right, pup. You're safe, the hero says quietly, voice breathy with relief, gathering the hiccuping and sobbing boy close. BB but you're not, what, what if if the gloves is to stop working? Or, or I forget to put them back on one day and, and, breaking off into more wet sobs, clutching onto Raiden tightly, shaking viciously from head to toe. He felt nauseous, but not like he was going to throw up. He just wanted everything to stop. The nightmares, the memories, all of it. He hated this, he hated this clawing anxious feeling tearing at his edges like he tore at his own skin whenever he had a few moments of quiet. Even this hero's steady, safe presence wasn't enough to fully chase it all away. He felt like he was drowning in mud, like he could never quite get a full breath in. All the joy he had experienced throughout the day had fled from the darkness that had taken him over, making him instead feel guilty for being happy. He didn't deserve it. He had killed his family. He didn't deserve to be. Tenko, breathe kiddo. Raiden's voice cuts through the thought spiral, and Tenko rakes in a deep, gasping breath, coughing a couple times as he inhales spit. Listen. I know it's been hard for you. I can't imagine what you're going through right now, all the pain and terror you're experiencing. But you won't hurt me, I know you won't. Hich, how do you KK know? Tenko whimpers, still coughing a little. Call it a feeling, but you're a good kid. And after what happened, I know that you'll never want something like that to happen again. Which means you'll be careful and you'll work hard to control your quirk. Right? Tenko nods shakily to this more sobs pulling from his small body. You're all right? I've got you. I'm scared. All right? N? Every time I I close in my eyes I, I just SSC my family. I I was so as a scared but uh, so weird. He hiccups, shuddering hard. I I killed in my family all of them. I'm a VVV villain. He breaks into full sobbing with this one, forehead pressed against Raiden's chest, shaking even harder. It's okay to be scared, Tenko. Raiden replies quietly, wrapping his arms more fully around him, one hand reaching up and gently rubbing the back of his head, scratching lightly at the nape of his neck. But you're not a villain. Not at all. But dash. Ah no buts. It was an accident right? The hero cuts him off, and then the boy nods to his question after hesitating for a moment. It had been an accident after all, he hadn't meant to do any of. He had just been so scared when he had killed Mon, and then Hannah, then Mama and his grandma and grandpa. He couldn't remember being scared when he killed father. Surely that much made him a villain, right? But before his thoughts could spiral again, Raiden gives him a gentle squeeze. I've killed people too, so have all heroes. Sometimes on purpose, sometimes by accident. Sometimes our battles get so big that innocent people get caught up in them and they die. Sometimes we can't get there to help them fast enough. And sometimes we have to kill the villains we fight in order to save them and others, the man murmurs, 
and it was hard for Tenko to tell what he was feeling, he was keeping his voice very calm and level. So, if you're a villain because of an accident, then I guess I'm an even worse one than you. What? Tenko squeaks, pulling back out of Raiden's arms, itchy, bloodshot eyes wide, and he was able to see a little better now that his eyes had adjusted to the dark. Raiden looked tired, and also sad, as he looked down at him. But but you're a great hero. You're not a villain at all. You've saved so many people AIN. And you have saved me too, trailing off, Tenko blinks a couple times, frowning with thought, a few tears still rolling down his face. And you have all your life ahead of you to be a hero and save people too. Don't write yourself off as a villain so soon, Raiden says, reaching out and resting his hand on Tenko's head, smiling as the boy looks up at him. Tenko didn't understand how the hero could be so understanding and kind with him, and always so, so patient even though this was the second night in a row he had woken him up with either a nightmare or a panic attack. You're a good kid, Tenko. Truly. You've just been through a terrible event. But, that doesn't mean that this has to be where your growth stops. Learn from all of this and use it to make yourself stronger, so that you can help others like yourself in the future. Tenko whimpers, shutting his eyes, a shiver passing through him from head to toe, and he scratches at his neck with one hand. He didn't want to imagine anyone else going through what he had. All the fear and despair, the pure panic and desperation. And then days of wandering, hoping and praying that someone, anyone would help him. He had started to give up when Raiden had found him, and everything was changing so, so quickly. He was so overwhelmed by it all, and then piling on top of all of that were the nightmares. The memories. He didn't know how to cope with it all. He had forgotten all the bad stuff for a little while this morning, but now that things were quiet, he couldn't make it go away. Sniffling hard, he looks up at the man beside him, shifting in place. I'm sorry for waking you up. Again, he murmurs, and Raiden gives his head a couple pats. Don't be. I wouldn't have things any other way. I'm here for you, whenever you need me. I'm not about to make you go through all of this alone. Raiden replies, and he sounds like he means every bit of it. A different kind of tears well up in Tenko's eyes now, ones of relief mostly, and also just pure exhaustion, and he crawls forward, attaching himself to Raiden's front, shuddering and sniffling. The man holds him close, shifting them both around and laying back down on the pillows, pulling the blanket back up over both of them. Tenko didn't know how long he laid there, awake, holding his small, trembling body and rubbing his back and petting his hair. But eventually, he's blinking his eyes open again and the room was much lighter out. The windows were opened a little to let a breeze in, and he can hear birdsong faintly coming through. He must have fallen back asleep. His eyes were still itchy and felt crusty, so he spends a while after sitting up rubbing at them, scratching a little at his eyelid and arm, looking around. Raiden wasn't in the room, but the door to the hall was open, so maybe he was downstairs. Part of Tenko was glad for that, that gave him a little time to collect himself. He still felt conflicted. He wanted to be happy, to enjoy this new part of his life, to have fun with Raiden and make new friends. But he still felt bad that he wanted and was feeling those things, especially when he didn't have his sister anymore to share it all with. She would have loved meeting Raiden, he was sure of it. He was a lot of fun, and always so kind and patient. Tenko wondered, if he had never broken his family, if he and Hannah had met Raiden in the park or something, if he would have taken some time to play with them. Honestly, he thought so. Feeling tears well up again in his eyes, Tenko blinks rapidly to clear them, sniffling hard and pushing the blankets back, shimmying out of the bed and padding to the hall bathroom. There was a step stool in there now, which allowed him to step up and look at himself in the mirror with more ease. It felt weird, looking at his reflection and instead of seeing black hair and dark eyes, he saw silver-blue hair and red eyes. He also had a couple new scars, one on his lip and one on his eye. They looked fresh but had healed. He hadn't had those before the breaking. Maybe he had done it to himself during it? Everything had been such a swirl of panic and fear that he couldn't be sure. Frowning, watching his reflection do the same, which confirmed that, yes, he really did look that different. Tenko splashes some cool water on his face, does his morning business, and starts slowly making his way downstairs. He can smell coffee, and the television was on quietly in the living room, playing a news channel reporting on the weather and local news. 
Really taking the time to look around the house, Tenko found himself liking it. Much like the bedroom, it was all very cozy and welcoming with comfortable furniture and lots of warm or natural colors. Poking his head around the entry to the kitchen, he sees Raiden sitting on a stool at the central island, laptop opened beside him on some page Tenko couldn't quite see, but he was looking at something on his phone instead, sipping on a cup of coffee. Tenko winces when he moves a little and his foot thumps against the doorway, which gets Raiden's attention, the man turning and looking at him, smiling a little. Well good morning. I'm surprised you're awake already, I was going to let you sleep as long as you needed to, he says, and Tenko scuffs his feet on the floor. If you're hungry, I can make some French toast or something, but I don't think I've ever had that before. Is it good? I think so. Raiden hums, sliding off the stool, setting his phone down. Tenko squeaks a little as he's lifted up and set in one of the tall stools, squirming around on it so he could watch Raiden cook their breakfast, though he kept glancing at his coffee cup. Can I try some of that? He eventually asks, blinking innocently. Raiden looks between him and the coffee cup, a thoughtful frown on his face before shrugging, grabbing the cup and holding it out to Tenko, who takes it and takes a tentative sip. It was hot, but not too hot, and while it had a bit of bitterness to it, it was also creamy and tasted like Raiden had put caramel in it. He didn't hate it, not at all actually. Seeing that he wasn't repulsed, Raiden grins, chuckling. I'll fix you your own cup, how's that? You want it just like mine or a little sweeter or creamier? No, your way is fine. It's pretty good. I've never gotten to try coffee before. Father always said I'd hate it. Well, he might not have fixed it up the way I do. Some people just take cream in it, others take it black, where it's still pretty bitter. It's usually an acquired taste. What's a acquired taste? Where you have to get yourself used to how something tastes by eating or drinking it over and over again until you like it or can at least tolerate it. Raiden answers easily, getting a clean mug out of a cabinet and fixing Tenko about a half a cup's worth of coffee, fixed up with the cream and sugar and caramel the way he had done it for himself, setting it down in front of Tenko. There you go, pup. Now French toast. Turning away, he gets out some bread, eggs, sugar, and a couple other things, plus a frying pan, and starts working on their breakfast while Tenko half listens to the news in the background as he watches him. Eventually, though, between sips of coffee, he tilts his head. Why do you call me pup? He asks, having noticed that Raiden had called him that several times now. The man blinks, cocking his head and thinking about this before shrugging. Just a verbal tick, I guess. Kinda like the detective from yesterday saying woof. My quirk has a whole slew of animal qualities to it, so I guess it fits that some of those things would carry over into the way I talk. You purr too. Like a cat. Tenko adds, seeing a bit of redness come over Raiden's face and ears. Clearing his throat, he flips the pieces of bread before answering. Yeah well, that's just part of it too I guess. I can growl as well, even looking fully like a normal man. He half mutters, shifting his weight a little, and Tenko can't help but giggle at him acting all embarrassed. It was nice to see a different, more vulnerable side to Raiden. It made him appear a little more, human, Tenko supposed. Comfortable quiet stretches on between them, and soon, they both have their coffee and French toast, and Tenko finds himself, despite the hard night, quite content, while Tenko had been sleeping in, Raiden had spent the morning on the internet. He had ordered the child some pajamas, a couple coats of various warmth, and a handful more toys. He had also ordered a game console to hook up to the living room television, and about half a dozen various games for them to play together, figuring that might be a good way to spend time together even if he was tired from being a hero all day. While checking his emails, he had saved the copies of the approved foster licenses and all of the official documents that gave him legal rights over Tenko to his computer, as well as to his phone to have on hand. He had also contacted the local clinic and set up an appointment for the early afternoon to get Tenko assessed and also have his quirk officially added to his files, and once it was a decent hour, about eight, he had sent Inko a text. Since then they had been talking shop and also just getting a little familiar with one another. She was a sweet and genuine woman, he noted that right away. He found himself trusting her, despite barely knowing her on a personal level. There was just something comforting about her demeanor. The things that had been ordered the night before arrived shortly after breakfast, 
so the hero and the child spend the rest of the morning getting Tenko's room set up. Tenko himself as a little on the quiet side this morning, his red eyes distant with thought, and Raiden just lets him be. When he was ready, he'd speak up. But considering how horrible the breakdown he had had the night before, after a pretty vicious nightmare, Raiden imagined that he was still a little tired, at least mentally. By the time lunch rolls around, all but the extra nightstand had been put together and put where Tenko wanted them, his bed now having all might sheets and pillows on it, and the curtains covering his sliding glass door were Storm Beast themed. Raiden wasn't sure how he felt about standing in the doorway, staring at cartoon versions of his hero persona and beast form, but he wasn't about to be someone who squashed Tenko's joy. Once Inko's leftovers were reheated and they sat down to eat, Raiden looks up at the boy. We're going to the local clinic after we eat. I was able to get you an appointment to get generally checked over and also to register your quirk. I want to ask about a cream or medicine to take care of all your itching too, in case we can't find that bomb Yuri talked about. After that, we'll go get stuff for your bathroom, he says, offering the boy a small smile. Tenko blinks up at him, giving his head a small shake to clear his thoughts a little and then manages a smile. It was small but genuine which was a relief to Raiden after the child's relative silence all morning. Do you think this doctor will be able to give me the right thing? Everything Mama tried before didn't ever work, he asks, voice tinged with sadness, his scarred brow furrowing at the mention of his mother, and he absently scratches at his wrist. Well, they should be able to look up your medical history and give us something that hasn't been tried yet. So I'm hopeful. Raiden replies with a loose shrug. I have noticed that you seem to itch more when you're upset or anxious. I think that might be worth mentioning to the doctor, too. At the mention of this, Tenko's fingers stop their itching and he looks down at his fingers like he hadn't even realized what he was doing. He pulls them back in a slightly jerky motion, picking up his chopsticks again to keep his hand occupied with them instead. I, I did always itch more at home. Especially when father was home, can being upset or scared really do something like that? He asks, blinking up at Raiden. I'm not a doctor, but it wouldn't surprise me. I know when people get depressed it can make them want to sleep all the time or not eat, so I don't see why anxiety wouldn't make you itchy. Our minds and bodies are connected in strange ways that don't always make sense. It's even stranger with the addition of quirks. Smiling gently, Raiden finishes up the rest of his lunch, sliding his bowl aside and focusing on Tenko. Don't worry, we'll get it all figured out. It might just take a little time. In the meantime though, since we're registering your quirk, you should probably be thinking about what you want to call it. Sometimes the doctors will let you choose, but remember that whatever you pick is what it's always going to be called. So really give it some thought. Okay. Tenko all but squeaks, perking up at this, fully smiling now as he cocked his head. Did you get to pick the name of your quirk? Raiden shakes his head, feeling his expression fall a little as memories of a different time swim to the surface, memories of a man who looked very much like him, but with less freckles and more wrinkles, glaring down at him with nothing but disdain and hate in his eyes pushing at the edges. Squeezing his eyes shut, he shakes his head to clear it and puffs out a breath, making himself smile at least a little. No, my father did. But luckily, he picked a decent one. It was probably one of the only decent things he did for me. Enough so that I also made it my hero name. Your father was mean to you, too? Did, did he hit you like father did to me? Tenko nearly whispers, squirming uncomfortably, red eyes wide, and Raiden can't help but feel a little pinned by them for a moment. He's quiet for a while, contemplating what he should tell Tenko, if he should even tell him anything. He wanted to be honest with the boy, but his personal demons really shouldn't be a concern to him. However, if Tenko knew they, had something so deep and terrible in common. Raiden hoped that it would make building their relationship and Tenko's trust in him all the easier. So, he sighs, shifting his weight. Yeah, yeah, he would. A lot. He wanted me to be a hero more than anything, even though that's not what I wanted at first. He didn't have a strong quirk, so when mine came through so powerful, he decided my entire life for me. When I resisted, or I didn't measure up to his expectations, he would beat me. A few times, when he was done, I'd hear my mother talk about needing to take me to the hospital, but then he'd just hit her too and walk away. I never did end up getting taken. Honestly, it might explain a few things, 
I probably got hit on the head a few too many times, trailing off into a somewhat strained laugh. Raiden shakes his head, rubbing at his beard, making an absent note that it was time to trim it up a little. They're both gone now. They died the same year I graduated from UA, so my father never got to see me become what he molded me into. But once I did become a hero, and even before that when I was doing work studies and stuff, I was enjoying all of it a lot, and I still do. So, it's not all bad. Tenko listened to him talk with wide eyes, and part of Raiden felt bad dumping so much on a five-year-old. He was an adult, after all. But, he justified to himself, Tenko had asked. Sure, the mature thing would have been to redirect the conversation, but it was too late now. A light tug on his pant leg makes him blink, and he looks down, having not realized Tenko had shimmied down from his stool and moved around to his side of the island. Reaching down, he picks the boy up, shock jolting through him when the boy wraps him up in a tight hug, tucking his head up under his chin, clinging to him like he'd float away if he didn't hold on tight enough. He hears Tenko sniffle a little, which spurs him into wrapping his arms around the child in return. It's just not fair. What do you mean, he asks, letting his chin rest lightly on Tenko's head, noting that his hair was much softer now that it was clean. Why do dads get to be so mean to their kids and nothing gets done? The boy huffs, his voice a little watery. Raiden can't help but chuckle a little, patting Tenko's back. Not all dads are like ours were. In fact, we're the exception, not the rule. Most are very kind and good, he hums, hearing a skeptical sound come from the boy in his arms. I'm serious. I know I'd be jealous of my classmates a lot when they talk about going hiking or fishing or something with their dads, or when they talk about nice things their dads had done for them for birthdays and holidays. It never felt fair to me to hear all that and then go home to the man my father was, shrugging, he gives Tenko a light squeeze. But, there's something that can be learned from what we went through with our fathers. What's that? Tenko puffs, sitting back and looking up at Raiden, pouting a little and not seeming to believe that anything positive could come from being hit and mistreated by his father. Well, I know that I definitely know that I hated my childhood, mostly because of how my father would treat me. Which means that I know that I don't ever want to treat my kids that way. So, I can promise you Tenko, that I'll do my utmost to never treat you the way my father treated me, the hero hums, poking Tenko's nose lightly, grinning when his face scrunches a bit. I'll still expect you to be the best you you can be, but I'll never force my own dreams and will on to you. And I'll definitely never hit you for not meeting my expectations. Tenko ponders this for a few moments, brow furrowing as his little mind worked, trying to parse and understand Raiden's words and perspective. Then his red eyes brighten and he smiles, meeting Raiden's eyes. And I can promise that if I ever have kids that I'll let them love heroes as much as they want. They can like whatever they want to, and I'll never tell them that it's against the rules or hit them if I don't like it, he states with finality. Raiden chuckles, ruffling his hair and lightly kissing his forehead, expression softening when Tenko looks at him with shocked joy. That's the spirit, pup. Now then, go get yourself a pair of socks and shoes from upstairs. We should get going to the clinic soon. Wouldn't want to be late. And remember, be thinking about what you want your quirk to be called in case they let you pick it yourself, the hero says, setting Tenko on the floor and sliding off the stool himself, busying himself with washing their bowls and Inko's Tupperware, putting it in a spot where he wouldn't forget it the next time he went to her apartment, which would probably be when he dropped Tenko off the first time to be watched by her. Oh. Tenko decides to wear his black and purple shoes to go with his Storm Beast shirt, digging a pair of black socks out of his closet drawer and pulling them on. Then, he sits down on the floor if his new bedroom, pulling his shoes on and then concentrating hard on remembering how Raiden had showed him to tie the laces. His tongue pokes out a little in his concentration, and it takes him a little bit, but eventually he gets it. Well mostly. It was a little messy, and one of them comes undone halfway down the stairs, nearly making him tumble the rest of the way down. Before he can tip forward though, warm, strong arms catch him, and he can't help but giggle a little up at Raiden, who carries him the rest of the way down and then sits him on the kitchen island to fix his laces. The morning had been a little hard. For as hard as he tried, he couldn't quite get his mind off of the nightmare or his family, so he had been pretty quiet. He had seen the worried looks Raiden would send his way from time to time, but the man hadn't pushed him. Part of Tenko wished he had, 
but another, louder part was grateful he hadn't. He was tired of crying and feeling so crappy. Though, after hearing Raiden talk about how awful his dad had been, he wondered how much the hero had cried, and how many days he had felt as terrible as Tenko often did. He wondered if he still had days like that. He had seen how sad and upset Raiden had gotten as he talked about his father, even though he tried his best to hide it. Tenko remembered seeing that expression in his own reflection, as well as on Hannah's face on the days when father was particularly mean to them, or when he caught them talking about or watching anything hero-related. Something inside Tenko galvanized then, making his back straighten a little as he sat in the back seat of Raiden's car, watching the town roll by on the way to the clinic. Raiden had saved him and had smiled and held and comforted him when he cried or was feeling sad about his family. So, Tenko would do the same for him, he resolved. He'd be a hero for his hero, in any way he could. Having come to that decision, he switches gears, thinking hard about what he wanted his quirk to be called. His quirk was a scary thing to think about right now, but he hoped that it wouldn't always be that way. One day, he'd be a hero, and he'd use his quirk to save people not hurt them. So, the name couldn't be anything super scary. But he wasn't sure he knew enough words to come up with something that was going to be good enough. Raiden? He pipes up, looking at the hero as he drove, seeing him look in the rear view at him briefly. What do you think would be a good name for my quirk? He asks, figuring Raiden was an adult. He knew more. Words, especially ones that would work with his quirk. The man lets out a low hum, thinking on this, fingers idly tapping on the steering wheel. Well, let's see. It turns things into dust, so you could just call it that. Ugh. But, not everything was dusted, like the wood from the house. It was rotted mostly, and the plaster was cracked and deteriorated at the edges, he hums, and Tenko doesn't miss how he avoids talking about his family, which he was glad for. Ugh. How about decay? He suggests after thinking for a moment more. What's that mean? Well, it's got several meanings. It can mean to break something down into its parts. It can mean to rot something. It refers to the way things like wood or plants break down naturally over time. That sounds scary. Tenko hums with a small pout, which deepens as Raiden chuckles. I don't think so. Decay is a natural process. Everything goes through it, even we will one day. There's nothing scary about that. In fact, when things like plants and such decay, it can be a good thing for the environment around them. When wood decays, it makes food for mushrooms and some kinds of bugs. When plants decay, it feeds the soil and because of that, new plants grow faster, bigger, and better. Decay is needed for life. Tenko doesn't reply right away, really thinking about this. Decay was needed for life? That was a lot to think about and try to understand. All he had seen so far of his quirk was death. But, if he was going to use his quirk to save instead of kill, then maybe having a name like Decay would be a good thing? He didn't really understand it now, but he hoped with time and by learning more about the world and his own quirk, he'd understand it more in the future. I think I like that. Decay? He says with a nod, really feeling the word on his tongue. Yeah. Plus, you can take something, a word, a concept, that usually has a not-so-good view surrounding it and turn it into something very good. You think so? Hey, if I can take a 40-foot-long rage monster with 80 feet of wings and turn it into something that saves lives, I think you can take a word and power like yours and do the very same and better. Raiden snorts grinning over his shoulder at Tenko, who cocks his head. You're not a monster, Raiden. Tenko replies innocently, hearing Raiden chuckle as he focuses back on the road, but the hero doesn't say anything to rebuff him. Tenko was glad that Raiden was so smart. He seemed to always have an answer for Tenko's questions. That was part of being an adult, he thought. Adults knew and understood so much more than kids did. He wondered how much work it would take to get to Raiden's level so that when kids asked him a bunch of questions, he'd have all the answers they needed, whether it was to help them understand something new or strange, or to comfort and reassure them. A few minutes later, they're pulling up to the small clinic that was near to Raiden's house, and once the hero has them signed in, showing the lady at the front desk that Tenko had to stand on his tiptoes to see over the top of something on his phone, they sit down in the waiting area. Raiden had a clipboard, a pen, and a stack of papers that he was quietly filling out while Tenko watched the television that was playing quietly in the corner. 
It was on a news channel, going over various small crimes that had been stopped around the district, many of which had been stopped by Raiden's sidekicks since they were still within his area of influence. Then it cuts to a clip from the night before, and Tenko reaches over, shaking Raiden lightly. Look, look, he half whispers, pointing at the screen. On it, it was showing footage from a huge, fiery wreck from the night before, during which a kid that didn't look much older than Tenko had saved a bunch of people with his quirk. He was pretty small-looking, with blonde hair and large feathery red wings, and from what the somewhat grainy footage could show, he seemed to have control over the feathers themselves, because they moved independently of his body, pulling people out of the wreck. So cool. Who do you think that is? Tenko asks, looking over at Raiden, who looked thoughtful. I don't know. That's unusual though, a kid that young saving people like that. I might have to make a few calls and look into it. It wasn't in my usual bubble, but a kid that young with a quirk like that saving that many people isn't something to be ignored. Raiden hums, watching as the clip looped again whistling quietly. Kids fast, that's for sure. He did a good job. Tenko nods enthusiastically, grinning and wiggling in place. He watches the news for a few more minutes, then turns and looks at the papers that Raiden was filling out. What's all that? Mostly papers to make you into a patient of this clinic. The doctor here will be your regular one from now on, unless we move for some reason. So they need a bunch of my information, and as much as I can give about you. But, I showed the nurse at the desk a copy of my foster papers and what information Tsukachi was able to find, and from there she was able to find your medical records. They'll be moved under my name so I can access them. Ugh. That sounds boring. Tenko puffs, pouting a little, and Raiden chuckles. Oh it is, trust me. Boring adult stuff. Enjoy being a kid while it lasts. Being an adult is a lot of this, the man says, waving the clipboard idly. Lots of paperwork. Especially if you're a hero. Every incident has to have a report. I'm just lucky I have a staff that can do a lot of mine. Outside of the bigger incidents and fights? Tenko sticks his tongue out a little in response to this, plopping back in his seat, watching Raiden write, recognizing most of the letters, but not all of them. Most of the words were foreign to him too. Which brought his mind back around to school. He'd have to go eventually, he knew that. That was where he could learn how to read and write and understand the world. Plus, elementary school was just the first step towards getting to hero school. He hoped that when he was a teenager, he'd be good enough by then to make it into UA. Raiden said he graduated from there, plus it was the best hero school in the country, and one of the best in the world. He's pulled out of his thoughts when he hears his name called, taking Raiden's hand as the man stands, walking beside him into the back of the clinic and into an exam room. The nurse has him sit on a raised exam table and goes through a few checks like his temperature, his ears, and his reflexes on his knee. She also measures his height and has him step onto a scale. Once all that's done, they're left alone to wait on the doctor, who would be the one to talk to Tenko about his quirk and also about his allergies and what they could do about it. Well, they'd probably talk to Raiden mostly. That was how it usually was with Mama. Another adult thing, he guessed. But that was okay, he didn't mind that. The entire visit was pretty uneventful for the most part. The doctor, a middle-aged woman with something that smelled like mint growing through her hair, comes in, takes the papers that Raiden had completed to scan into Tenko's file and register him as a patient, and then they sit and discuss his quirk manifestation. Raiden does most of the talking, though Tenko does answer a few questions as well as he's able to. He had only used the quirk the one time, and he had been terrified the whole time, so it was hard to answer things about how it felt clearly and, honestly, Eventually, they got to the part where they could enter his quirk into the registry, and the doctor turns to Tenko so he could pick the name he wanted for his quirk. Take this seriously now, things having to do with your quirk can only be changed within reason a couple of times, she says. Tenko frowns with thought, really considering the name he had picked for his quirk. Yes, it sounded scary, but like Raiden said, he could take a scary-sounding word and turn it into something that wasn't as scary when he became a hero. So, he grins and looks at the doctor, squirming in place. I wanna name it Decay, he says confidently, seeing Raiden smile where he was sitting against the opposite wall. Decay? That's a pretty heavy name. Are you sure? she asks. When Tenko nods firmly, 
she mirrors it and types a few things in on her tablet and then passes it to Raiden, who uses his finger to sign his name. All right, with that it's all entered in and submitted. Was there anything else that you needed to speak to me about? She hums, looking between Tenko and his guardian. Yes, actually. I'd like to ask about skin care recommendations for what seems to be allergies for Tenko. Raiden hums. He told me his mother tried several different creams, and it should also be in his medical records any that had been prescribed. I also noticed, and Tenko agreed, that he itches more when his anxiety is higher, or he's otherwise distressed. The doctor taps a few times on her tablet, probably looking at Tenko's past doctor visits for his skin issues, nodding thoughtfully. Yes, I see here that he's been in at least four different times to his previous doctor for rash or allergy-related issues, but nothing seemed to help it, she says, scanning through his records, then looking back up at the pair of them. I hesitate to prescribe too much heavy medication to children his age. However, I will write a new prescription for a different skin cream. I would also recommend things such as chamomile tea, anything with lavender in it, and if this prescription doesn't help after a week or two, the local pharmacy sells a tea tree balm. The previous two have calming effects and will help with his anxiety. Of course, therapy is also an option to give him tools to deal with it without medicinal help. If these methods don't help or have very little effect, you're always welcome to contact a mental health specialist and see about getting him on a low dose of anti-anxiety medication. That combined with a skin care regimen to manage dry and itchy skin, as well as any potential allergies he does have, should have a huge effect. Tenko felt like his head was swimming. Most of what the doctor says goes right over his head, though Raiden seemed to follow it perfectly, nodding along and absorbing what he was being told. I need to schedule something with a therapist for him soon anyway, for an incident that happened recently. I'll bring up the anxiety-induced itching with them too, the man says, taking the slip of paper with something scribbled on it that she hands him. Excellent. If there's nothing else, I think we're done here. It's been a pleasure meeting you little Tenko. I look forward to having you as my patient, the doctor says with a pretty, friendly smile, standing, bowing, and excusing herself. Raiden sighs, standing and helping him off the exam table, holding his hand while they go back to the front and to the car. Well, that went well. Good thing we were going shopping today anyway. We should be able to get everything we need at the pharmacy. I didn't get a thing, she said. Tenko half whines, pouting when Raiden laughs at him. All this adult stuff is making my head hurt. Can we get ice cream to make it feel better? He puffs, pouting a little at Raiden as he continues chuckling. In early spring? Isn't it a little cold for that? No. I want ice cream, the boy replies, feeling a little bold and asking for things, feeling fully comfortable with Raiden. He didn't think for a second that the other would hurt him, even if he did get mad at him. Plus, their conversation from lunch was still fresh in his mind. The hero makes a show of letting out a put-upon sigh, but he gives in. But they had to go to the pharmacy first. Ice cream came later. Oh. Raiden was glad that the doctor visit had gone off without a hitch, especially when it came to the conversation surrounding Tenko's quirk. After the night the boy had had, he had been concerned that he wouldn't be able to handle talking about it. But he was pleasantly surprised at how well Tenko took it, though he had a feeling much of that was the excitement over getting to name it. Having seen the news report about that young boy saving those people had also bolstered the child's mood a lot. That was one thing that Raiden was going to look into when they got home. He had a bad feeling about the whole thing, and a young boy with an exceptional quirk was exactly the kind of thing that the Hero Public Safety Commission would want to sink their claws into. They had almost done it with him, but his father had been far too possessive of his little masterpiece to part with him for any reason. Plus, the family was also already rather wealthy, so no amount of money or power that the HPSC could have offered his father would have convinced him to hand Raiden over. One of the very few things he was thankful for, if the rumors surrounding the commission were to be believed. Raiden was no conspiracy theorist, or so he liked to believe, but he could say with certainty that they were corrupt. In a very, very bad way. He hoped that if the HPSC did want to get their hands on this winged kid, that he could somehow intercept them first. His reach was limited though, and there was only so quickly he could make things happen. It was getting into evening by the time they get back to the house, having stopped after getting some ice cream to also pick up some dinner from a local restaurant. 
Raiden puts the various toiletries in the hall bathroom, which was quickly becoming Tenko's bathroom, looking at the jar of tea tree balm he had found, contemplating it. Deciding to try the prescription stuff first, he puts it in a drawer and heads downstairs, putting some water on to boil to make them both some tea for the evening. Plucking Tenko up, who was playing with a couple of his action figures on the floor in front of the television, that Raiden had put a random cartoon on, he sits the kid in the recliner and crouches in front of him. Now then, let's give this stuff a shot, he hums, feeling a bit of pity for the boy when he lets out a long-suffering sigh, already used to the routine of being slathered in creams and ointments. He tries to be quick but thorough, getting all the spots that were dry and itchy, being careful by Tenko's eyes and mouth. He hears the boy grumbling unhappily when he walks away to wash his hands, chuckling quietly. We'll give it a couple weeks to see if it helps any, then we'll try Yuri's suggestion. But can I have some sugar in my tea? Tenko asks, still sounding a little pouty. He had already gotten off the recliner and returned to his toys on the floor, and Raiden can't help but feel more than a little fond watching him play contently. A lot had changed in just a couple days. He hadn't expected to end up taking care of a kid, fostering one no less, but here he was. If he was honest with himself, it was overwhelming, and a lot to handle and take on all at once. However, he didn't find himself disliking it one bit. Even with the challenges that came with the trauma that Tenko was dealing with, the boy was sweet and good-natured, and so far was a pretty easy kid. Raiden wasn't naive enough to think that every day would be easy, that there wouldn't be tantrums or arguments, or that he wouldn't let the boy down in his efforts to take care of him. But he was going to do his best to give him a good home. Sure, pup, he chuckles. He was enjoying these domestic moments that were already popping up. He hadn't realized how lonely his house was with just him in it. Even in just a couple days, Tenko had come in and filled the empty space he hadn't known was there. While he's in the kitchen, his phone rings, and he frowns when he sees Sakiko's name on the caller ID answering it quickly and holding it up to his ear. Yeah? What's up, he says, hoping that there wasn't some catastrophic incident that he just couldn't pass off to the sidekicks. You see the news? About that kid, she says, the faint sound of a tapping pen undertoning her words. That usually meant that she was annoyed by something but trying to remain professional. I did while I had Tenko at the doctor earlier. The kid okay? She asks, surprising him with the concern. He answers with a simple uh huh, which prompts her to continue talking. Right, so, I know you better than you know yourself most of the time, so I figured you'd want to look into this wonder kid. I looked into him, and it seems that his dad is a convicted murderer, and since Endeavor arrested him not too long ago, he and his mom have been on the streets. His name is Kigo Takami. He hears a little bit of typing in the background, glancing at the clock and wondering why she was still at the office seemed a little hypocritical to her, considering she was always on him about working too much. After I saw the news report, I tried to put some feelers out to see if we could help them out and provide them with a decent place to stay and schooling for the boy but Raiden winces at the trail off, knowing exactly what it meant. The HPSC already got to him didn't they? He asks rhetorically. Sakiko replies in the affirmative and he sighs heavily, rubbing a hand through his wild, black hair. Of course they did. They move way too fast, and who knows what exactly they want the kid for. Probably to make him into a weapon. Sakiko states bluntly, drawing a snort out of him. And you call me a conspiracy theorist? It's not a conspiracy if it's true. It wouldn't be the first time they've molded exceptional kids into obedient weapons to be their long arm and enforcers. They almost did it to you, but luckily your bastard father was too greedy to let you go. You read my mind, I was just thinking about that earlier. You think there's anything we can do to help the kid? Get him out of there before they can really get their hooks in him? Sakiko is quiet, considering this for a while before letting out a huff, the pen tapping renewing in the background. Honestly? But who knows where they'll take the kid or how quickly? Plus, it isn't a good idea to kick the hornet's nest too much. They could make your life a living hell if you piss them off too much. Ruin your career? Or just straight have you offed and install another rising star in your place. You're almost an anomaly among modern heroes already, considering you actually do, you know, a lot of community work. Heaven forbid I actually do my job properly, he drawls, 
turning the burner off as the tea kettle starts whistling a little, putting a sachet of tea that was supposed to be calming in a couple of coffee cups, adding a scoop of sugar and then pouring the water over it all, letting it steep for a while as he continued talking. Have Hitomi keep an eye out for the kid. I doubt he'll be anywhere but an HPSC facility for the foreseeable future, but if he pops up anywhere, I want to know about it. I want to at least have a conversation with him. Bice? You sure that's a good idea? Sakiko asks, sounding openly skeptical. Hitomi was something of a private watchdog within Raiden's agency, and he often used her for private surveillance on cases that required it. Her quirk allowed her to tap into the view of any camera within a 500 feet of her as long as it was powered, but because of it, she also tended to be a little unhinged because of the information overload. Yeah. Have her go mobile for the next six months on observation duty. Inside and outside the agency's area of influence. And make sure it's clear to her that discretion is key. If the commission catches wind of us looking for the kid, whatever the intentions may be, they'll get spooked and move him. You really are becoming an old cat lady, taking in strays, aren't you? You gonna take this kid in too if we manage to scoop him up? Sakiko barbs, making Raiden feel a little stung. Huffing, he rolls his eyes, giving the two mugs a light stir. I don't know. I've only had Tenko for two days, and we still have a lot that needs be done. Like school. And therapy. I don't think taking in another kid so quickly would be a good idea. Not to say I wouldn't try to find a good, safe home for him safe from the commission if we do manage to get him, but I'm also not holding my breath that that's something that we'll accomplish, he says, pulling the tea bags out of the cups and tossing them in the trash. Like I said, get Hitomi on it. She's our best bet for having any shot at locating this Kigo Takami kid. Sakiko hums her agreement, and after that they end the call, which allows Raiden to carry the tea back to the living room. Tenko was still occupied with his toys, and as Raiden sits down, he could think of very few things he would rather be doing right now than sitting here with the boy, with cartoons on in the background, especially when Tenko plucks up the courage to ask if Raiden wanted to play heroes with him and his toys. He was only too happy to agree over the rest of the week and through the weekend, Raiden and Tenko fall into a comfortable routine. They get up no later than 8, have breakfast, spend a little time in the living room watching a movie or playing on the new console that had come in, and then when lunch came around, they'd go out and pick from the selection of local restaurants and fast food places and either bring it home or go sit at the park to eat. If they went to the park, Raiden would encourage Tenko to go play on the playground. If it was empty or just had a couple kids, Tenko would run over and be climbing around on the jungle gym or going on the slide endlessly, but if there were a bunch of kids, he'd stick to the swings. It seemed to Raiden that the boy was a little shy. He could also understand being nervous around large groups because of his quirk, even with the safety provided by the gloves. Raiden had also been talking with Inko at least a little every day deciding that he may as well get to know the woman who would be watching his foster son nearly every day on a more friendly level. She was initially flustered that a high-ranking pro seemed to want to be her friend and genuinely get to know her, but she quickly settles in and casual conversation flowed easily. He learns that she was going to name her little boy that was due in July Izuku, and that her husband, Hisashi, was working overseas in America and sent her a fair sum of money every month. She was currently working from home for a few hours a day doing some accounting for a local firm to supplement it, which was helping out with all the baby preparations. Knowing this, Raiden thinks over his own budget, which really wasn't existent between his pay from being a high-ranked pro, plus the wealth that he had inherited when his parents had died, deciding on how much he'd pay her to keep Tenko. He also learns that Inko was a genuine and sweet-natured woman, who was willing to trust and love pretty quickly and he was enjoying their conversations and her friendship. It was nice to talk to someone who wasn't also in the hero profession, to get his mind off the constant cycle of villains and criminals that consumed his mind. He had also contacted a couple child therapists, and had chosen one that wasn't that far from the clinic he had already taken Tenko to, but they weren't able to get in for at least another week. With school starting soon he wanted to get Tenko on a regular schedule with a therapist. Plus, he needed to start building the boy's confidence with his quirk and his ability to control it and hold it back. The sooner the better, but he wasn't planning on doing anything before the first therapy session. He wanted Tenko to talk to a professional before he started pushing on boundaries. 
The child still had nightmares every night, though none of them were as vicious as the one on the second night, where Tenko had woken Raiden up thrashing and screaming like he was being skinned alive, not responding to Raiden calling his name and not waking up until he had been yanked on to sit up. That had scared the hero, though he hadn't been nearly as scared as Tenko had been. His stuttering voice and his sobs were somehow more heartbreaking now than the ones from when Raiden had first found him under the bridge. He didn't know if that was because Tenko was more comfortable with him and felt more free to express his emotions, or if it was because Raiden was so attached to the little boy already and cared so much for him. Luckily for them, too, Tenko was perfectly okay with flying. He had taken the boy up in the air on Friday and flown him around, and had laughed at the child squealing and laughing as he had done spins and flips high up in the air, even turning over and tossing Tenko higher and then quickly catching him before he could fall too far. Considering that was going to be their primary mode of transport once Raiden returned to work, it was good that he didn't have a fear of heights, and also trusted Raiden to not drop him. Hearing his peals of excited laughter had warmed his heart, and he had smiled for much of the rest of the day. Come Monday, Raiden's alarm goes off at about five, and he gives a long stretch and a yawn as Tenko groaned and burrowed under the blankets. Snorting, he pats the lump the boy made under the blankets and slides out of bed to clean up for his first day back at work. It was going to be hard, leaving Tenko after being with him every day for a little over a week, but his district needed him. They didn't have to leave until seven, so he lets the boy sleep for a while longer sitting in the kitchen and sipping on some coffee as he checked his emails on his laptop. So far, Sakiko reported that Hitomi hadn't dug anything up on Kigo Takami, but that was to be expected after only a couple days. Raiden had said six months, and he was trying to be hopeful that he'd at least be located, even if they wouldn't be able to get to him because of the HPSC. He'd like to at least keep tabs on the kid. He was just deleting a bunch of junk and scam emails when a new one pops up, and he sighs when he sees that it was the official email for Endeavor Agency. That usually meant a team up. And on his first day back too. Opening it he scrolls past the letterhead and scans the body of it. Evidently, Endeavor had located what he thought was a stash house for a drug and sex trafficking ring, and he required Raiden's assistance to stake it out. It would be a team up that would last probably a week or two, with mostly observation. Raiden was more suited for stealth than Endeavor, who was pretty noticeable with his stature and his flames. It was hard to be discreet when you glowed in the dark. Raiden on the other hand could be a living shadow when he put his mind to it. His clothing as well as the features of his quirk were all dark colors, many of them simply black, and with his ability to fly without having to use flames for propulsion, he could also reach areas that Endeavor and many of his sidekicks couldn't. Hitting reply, he cc Sakiko so she'd be made aware as well, and types his reply out, agreeing to meet up with the number two hero by mid-morning at the decided location, asking if there were any other details he was going to need to be aware of. He had just sat back down from refilling his coffee cup when a reply email pings through, with several attachments. Opening them, he scans over the photos, which were of several angles of a warehouse down by the river that ran through Endeavor's usual bubble of influence, as well as mugshots of a few villains that were suspected to be a part of the trafficking ring. They all had rap sheets as long as Raiden's arm, most of them of violent assaults and sex crimes, as well as drug dealing. Raiden often wondered how people wound up in the position of villain. No child dreamed of being a drug addict or of selling other people's bodies for quick cash. Whenever he pondered on it long enough, he always came to the same conclusion. It was often the failure of society as a whole that led them down the path of crime failures in the system and in communities to assist or police those around them, the failures of heroes to extend proper compassion to those that might not fit in. Heteromorphs were especially prone to discrimination and being excluded from their communities, which forced them into a life of crime. The statistics were staggering whenever he looked at them. The quirkless also faced harsh discrimination, being seen as weak, inferior, or less evolved than the greater population that had quirks. With a society saturated with both heroes and villains, those with no powers to defend themselves with were viewed as a liability. Shaking his head, he saves the attachments to his laptop, sending them to his phone as well for quick access, and shuts the laptop, sipping on his coffee. A big team up on his first day back to work, huh? 
well, it would give him an opportunity to prod Endeavor about this rumored new son he had seen articles floating around about online. Whenever he teamed up with the number two, he always made it his secondary mission to barb and poke at him as much as possible. It was fun flustering him, and it made slow days go by quicker. Endeavor acted like he hated it and hated Raiden, and yet he kept inviting him to do team-ups, when he very rarely did that with other more local heroes to his agency. Raiden wasn't sure if the man respected his abilities as a hero, or if he liked that Raiden challenged him and wasn't afraid of him. He would never call the two of them friends, but Raiden also didn't hate working with him. He was an effective hero, and it was worth working with him and learning from him to better his own career. Sighing, he finishes his coffee and slides off the stool, making his way back upstairs. Getting changed into his hero uniform, he goes over to the bed, giving Tenko's lump a light shake. Time to get up, kiddo. You need to get changed and put a bag together to take to Miss Inko's. I need to get to work soon, he says as the boy groans. He had had another nightmare, so Raiden was sure he was tired. He had spoken to Inko at length about Tenko's anxiety problems, and given her the cliff notes, censored version of the traumatizing reason that Raiden was fostering him. She had been horrified and so heartbroken for the child, and had assured him that she was ready and willing to handle anything that may come up while he was in her care. Pulling the blankets back, exposing Tenko to the cool air of the room, making him curl up into a tight ball, Raiden smirks as he peels one eye open to pout at him. I don't wanna. It's too early he whines. I know, but I need to get you to Miss Inko's. It's a bit of a flight to her side of Mizutafu, and then I have to double back and head toward Endeavor's area. He's asked me to help him out with something. Raiden replies, poking at Tenko's sides, making him squirm and stifle raspy giggles. His voice didn't seem to be recovering at all, retaining a raspy, somewhat throaty quality. But the doctor at the clinic hadn't said he had anything wrong with his throat from the examination she was able to do. He may have damaged his vocal cords screaming, or much like the change in his eyes, this was just part of the changes to him because of his quirk. You need to get up, do your allergy cream, and get changed. Then put a few toys and some snacks from the kitchen in your backpack. Come on, up up, poking him a few more times, he stops when Tenko pushes his hand away and sits up. The boy pouts rebelliously at him for a few seconds before huffing and sliding off the bed to go to the hall bathroom. Soon they were heading out the door, Tenko wearing his backpack on his front so Raiden could pick him up, and then there in the skies, Raiden's powerful, leathery wings carrying them high above the buildings, thick fin tail streaming out behind them and keeping the flight smooth and swift. It takes about 20 minutes to reach the apartment complex that Inko lives in, where he lands at the base of the stairs by her building, transforming back to his regular man appearance and taking Tenko's hand. He only has to knock once for Inko to come to the door, wearing an apron over her clothes, which really brought attention to her rounded belly, and she smiles when she sees the pair of them. Good morning. Come in, please, she chirps, motioning them inside. Raiden stops in the entry, squatting down in front of Tenko while the boy toes his shoes off. I can't stay. You be good for Miss Inko now. She has my number, so she'll tell me if you're cutting up, he says, though his tone was light as he pokes the boy's nose, smiling as he scrunches his face up. Tenko blinks oolishly at him a couple times before throwing himself at Raiden, hugging him around his neck tight, which he's only too happy to return. You'll come back and get me right? Tenko whispers into his shoulder, breaking Raiden's heart. Of course, pup. I'll always come back for you, you don't have to worry one bit about that, he says softly, giving him a squeeze. I'll miss you while I'm at work. Be good, okay? Tenko nods against him and then steps back, sniffling hard and wiping at his face, trying to stiffen his lip and act big and tough. Chuckling, Raiden ruffles his hair and stands up, smiling at Inko. Thank you again for agreeing to watch him. It's no trouble at all. Be careful at work. Come, Tenko. Why don't you help me with the muffins I'm making? Inko says with a gentle, understanding smile. Raiden waves goodbye to Tenko, who was a little teary-eyed but doesn't resist going with Inko when she offers her hand to him. Stepping back out the door, feeling like he was stretching a muscle too far as he moved away from Tenko and the apartment, Raiden gives himself a shake. As soon as he has enough room, his wings and tail are back and he's in the air, soaring back towards the place he had agreed to meet Endeavor.
Oh. When Raiden lands on the flat rooftop behind the number two, he gets little more than an annoyed glance over the shoulder before Endeavor focuses forward again, watching a building down below. Snorting, he transforms the wings and tail away, but keeps the changed nose and ears to keep his senses sharper, moving up beside the man, crouching on the edge of the building and looking over the lip. Good morning to you too, he drawls, glancing over at the taller man. Raiden was pretty tall at an even six feet tall, but Endeavor towered over him by at least six inches, never mind how broad the flaming hero was. The heat coming off him as his flames licked at the air was stifling. You're late, the man grunts, arms crossed as he scowled down at the warehouse below them, which to all outside appearances looked abandoned. Raiden snorts, opening a pocket on his pants and pulling out a pack of cigarettes, sliding one out, replacing the pack, and holding the cigarette out towards Endeavor's thigh, grinning to himself as the end lights with some of the flames coming off him, sticking the filtered end in his mouth. He didn't smoke often, but when dealing with the number two, sometimes he required nicotine or alcohol to get through the day. Had to drop my kid off at his sitter, he replies casually, smirking to himself at the feeling of Endeavor glowering at him when he realizes what he had done, snorting to cover a laugh when he takes one large side step away from him. It seems the man had to buffer his response for a second, because when he looks over he sees confusion and then a bit of curious shock flash across the other hero's eyes. Since when do you have a kid, is the response that eventually comes out. Since last Sunday. And you don't have to say it like that. Raiden replies, taking a drag and exhaling through his nose a cloud of acrid smoke. You shouldn't be smoking. It could give us away. Endeavor nearly tuts at him, getting a skeptical side eye from Raiden. Right, because your flaming ass won't? He huffs, seeing the man roll his eyes. Whatever. And stop using me as your personal lighter, the number two grouses, arms still crossed. There's a few beats of silence, and it seems like he can't resist prodding about Raiden suddenly having a kid. How'd you end up with a child? Raiden hums, scanning the alleys surrounding the warehouse below them. Considering this was day one of the stakeout and investigation and it had been implied this would take a while, he didn't expect to see much. It didn't hit the public, but I was working the case surrounding the Shimura family. Well, turns out it was a quirk accident. The youngest, a boy of five, suddenly manifested a powerful quirk he couldn't control. It wasn't pretty, he replies, not wanting to rehash all the details. I found the boy under a bridge. Poor kid was petrified and exhausted. And what, you took pity on him and took a child with a dangerous quirk into your home? The hero beside him half scoffs. Raiden looks at him fully and cocks an eyebrow. Seems like a rather immature snap decision to me. Don't talk like you're that much older and more mature than me. There's only four years between us, senpai, he challenges in return, to which Endeavor huffs. It was very thought out. And his quirk is easily contained with gloves with a couple fingers cut off. It requires a five-finger, skin contact, touch to do anything, rolling his eyes, Raiden takes another drag of the cigarette, flicking some ash away. Speaking of kids, I saw a rumor floating around that you've got another one. There any truth to that? Endeavor pauses, a number of emotions flitting across his face, from love and adoration to frustration and anger. Raiden didn't. No many details, but he was aware enough of the other hero to know that he was incredibly ambitious, prideful, narrow-sighted, and had a tendency to be more harsh than he initially intended. Most of the time without even realizing it. Damn internet tabloids, he eventually sighs, rolling his eyes, staring out over the city. Yes, I do. Shudo. He's a couple months old now, but already seems bright and promising. Promising. What an odd choice of a word. Raiden drawls, ears twitching as he followed a person on the street below with his eyes, but quickly deciding they weren't someone to watch, glancing back at Endeavor. And what about your other children? How's problem child doing? He hums. While they hadn't really talked at length about Endeavor's children, Raiden did know a few more things about the eldest, Tuya, and the problems he faced with his quirk and the uncertain future it had created. The question almost seems to deflate the number two a little, and he lets out a tired sigh. I don't know what to do with the boy, he mutters, scratching at his flaming jaw, grimacing a little. No matter how many times I tell him not to, he won't stop training by himself. 
His cork hurts him, he has his mother's constitution, but he won't give it up. Well, considering he was your golden child for the first few years of his life until you realized his cork was hurting him, I imagine he has a bit of a complex. Raiden snorts, ignoring the glare he can feel searing into his back. He wants to please you. I can relate. You fill a kid's head with dreams and that's what they'll chase. Tuya will keep trying to get your attention and keep trying to prove to you that he's good enough. The more you discourage him, the more he'll try. So you're saying it's my fault that he's doing this to himself? Endeavor huffs, sounding rather irritated. Raiden cuts him a look, looking him up and down then looking back down at the street. Well, I'm certainly not saying it's not your fault. Have you ever tried sitting down and calmly discussing things with him? Offering up alternative options besides being a hero? He doesn't listen. He doesn't listen? Or you don't talk? There's a difference between talking and commanding, the number 11 counters, bat ears flicking and rotating, one focused on endeavor, the other forward and listening to the clamor of everyday life in the city below them. It's really not my business what you do in the privacy of your own home, but just try to remember that your children are people. Of course they are. What else would they be? Endeavor retorts, Raiden's point completely going over his head. As always, the man was focused on his goal, to reach the top, to surpass all might, and his children were one of the ways he sought to get there. It really didn't surprise Raiden that he viewed his family as tools to reach his goal, even subconsciously. He had seen a steady decline in the man's demeanor over the last couple years. A shorter temper, even in front of the public, a laser focus on his hero work. He couldn't imagine what the home life was like for the Todoroki family. While he didn't doubt that Endeavor loved his children, his ambition and pride created a heavy fog over any of those softer emotions. Never mind, let's just focus on this mission. Raiden sighs, deciding to drop it for now, but putting a mental pin in the conversation. Oh. The stakeout had been uneventful, which Raiden had expected for the first day. Endeavor wasn't overly chatty, but he had been able to drag a few conversations out of the flaming hero, steering hard away from any mention of All Might. Those conversations always turned into a vitriol-filled rant from Endeavor that nothing could stop. Raiden wasn't sure what All Might had done to deserve such a level of dislike, verging on hate, from Endeavor, and he certainly wasn't about to ask. His concerns still lingered regarding Endeavor's children and family, but he reminded himself that it wasn't his business how the man conducted his household. So long as the children were taken care of, he had no real reason to stick his nose too far into it all, or at least that's what he told himself. Despite having done very little, Raiden was tired by the time he landed in front of Inko's apartment building, heading upstairs and knocking lightly, looking fully like a man again. He smiles when the door is opened, giving the woman behind it a tired wave. She invites him inside, insisting that he stay for dinner, and at the sound of his voice in the entry as he towed his shoes off, he can hear small feet hit the ground and run towards them. Bracing himself, he catches Tenko easily when the boy flings himself at him, wrapping his little arms and legs around Raiden's neck and waist, clinging tight to him. Laughing, he hugs the child back tightly, petting the back of his head. I missed you too, pup. I told you I'd come back for you, he says, voice warm. I know, but I still missed you. Tenko whimpers into his neck, a single shiver passing through him. He was very good all day. He did have a small panic attack when he woke up from a nap shortly after lunch, but I think it was mostly because he was somewhere unfamiliar without you. He calmed down quickly. Inko says, smiling gently at the two of them, leading them into the apartment and gesturing for Raiden to have a seat in the living room. Sitting on the couch, he smiles at Tenko as the boy sits back, sniffling a bit. You all right, kiddo? He asks, to which Tenko nods. Why? Uh, I just woke up confused and, and it scared me. Miss Inko hugged me until I calmed down and remembered though, the boy says, scarred lips pulling up into a smile, though he did look embarrassed. Oh, I have something for you, he squeaks, squirming out of his lap and hitting the floor running heading for the kitchen while Inko laughed quietly behind her hand. Tenko comes back quickly, proudly presenting Raiden with a blueberry muffin decorated with messy swirls of purple icing. I made this for you. Look, Miss Inko even let me dye the icing in your color. Well look at that. Thank you Tenko, that's very sweet of you. 
I tell you what, I'll save it until after dinner, and then if you want some of it we can half it. Raiden laughs, taking the plate with the muffin on it, smiling broadly at the boy, who giggles happily in return. It was so nice to see him happy and acting like a normal kid. There had been a lot of ups and downs over the last week with Tenko's mood and mental state, and some days were better than others. Raiden expected that trend to continue for a while, but when Tenko was happy, he was happy with him. But tomorrow can I bring my Storm Beast plush? I promised Miss Inko that I'd show it to her, the boy asks, scuffing his feet on the rug a little. Oh did you now? I suppose that's alright if you can fit it into your backpack. I don't want you accidentally dropping it on the flyover. Raiden hums, chuckling when Tenko nods resolutely, seeming determined. Now then, how about we keep Miss Inko company in the kitchen while she finishes dinner, Itchum? I can tell you about my boring steak out and how I made Endeavor's day a nightmare. Tenko blinks a couple times at this, cocking his head in confusion. How'd you do that? Pointless small talk. He hates it. And I find it funny that he hates it, and I have something of a death wish, so I like teasing him with it when we're on long missions together. Raiden chuckles, standing and walking behind Inko to the kitchen, sitting at the dining table with Tenko across from him, setting the muffin down in a secure place to have after supper. He could smell teriyaki, and after a moment of focus, he can tell it's chicken with a spread of stir-fried vegetables with it, while the rice cooker counted down gradually on the countertop. The whole setting was very homey, enough so that if Raiden wasn't busy chatting with Tenko while Inko cooked, he could easily relax enough to fall asleep right now. But somehow, this week had been longer than the last one. He and Endeavor had made very little progress on the stakeout, even with Raiden slipping in close a few times to investigate a little closer, perching on neighboring warehouse roofs or using his tail to balance and hang down off the eave of the building and peer into the windows. He couldn't see much though, even with his ability to see in the dark. High walls and sheet coverings had been constructed inside, obscuring his view. That alone was suspicious, but it wasn't enough to justify them making an entry, and they had yet to see anyone come or go. Even the sidekicks they had watching it at night hadn't seen anything. Endeavor insisted that his information had been good, so either someone had a quirk that allowed them to pass undetected, or there was some kind of internal entrance and exit. Tenko's first session with his therapist Friday morning had gone, not great. The boy was wary of opening up to the stranger sitting across from him, and had a hard time talking about his feelings or what had happened to him. Which Raiden had expected, if he was honest with himself. It would take more than one therapy session to lay anything out on the table to address it properly. When the therapist had pressed just a little, it had triggered a full-blown anxiety attack, the questions and new person combined with the strange setting, and the persistent nightmares being just a little too much for Tenko to handle. It had taken about ten minutes to bring him out of it, and he refused to answer any more questions for the rest of the hour. It was hard to get him to go to Inko's after it, which had been their agreement that morning. Raiden still had to work. He had told Endeavor that he was going to be patrolling his own usual area that day, and had sent one of his sidekicks to assist with the stakeout. He had taken the morning off for the therapist appointment, but after that, he had to drop Tenko off with Inko. The boy had resisted, crying and clinging to Raiden in the entryway, but eventually the promise that he'd be back in time for dinner and Inko bribing him with helping with some cookies gets him to let go and let Raiden leave. It had been a rough afternoon. Almost two full weeks of not having much of a presence in his district had made many of the villains hiding within it a little more bold. His sidekicks were effective, and the other local and neighboring heroes had been kind enough to help cover his area while he had been getting Tenko settled in and helping Endeavor but none of them were heavy hitters like Raiden. By the time three o'clock rolled around, only three hours into his patrol, he had been in four fights. He had been stabbed twice during the first one, but luckily one of the EMTs had a minor healing quirk so he was healed up pretty quickly. He had escaped more than a couple bruises during the next two, but this last one had been rough. He had had to go a little past his half-form to augment his strength more as he faced the brute of a villain trying to rob a local store, who had some kind of strength and size-enhancing quirk. He had won, but during it all he had dislocated his shoulder. It had been painful giving his statement to police, waiting for them to cart the villain away, and then dealing with the press and his fans. Smiling through pain was nothing new to him though, 
but having to lift his numb and pain-filled arm with sheer willpower alone to side hug fans and take photos for a few minutes after the fight ended had been difficult. Luckily for him, his patrol area had a number of quiet sections to it too, which is where he heads next so he could deal with his shoulder in peace. Stepping into a seldom-used park, he walks up to the corner of a public toilet and uses it to pop his shoulder back into place, growling and snarling in pain to himself as his nerves all shout in protest. Shaking his hand out and flexing his numb fingers, he glances around, frowning a little when he hears light sniffling. It sounded like a kid, and something inside him wonders what was in the air around him that seemed to be drawing unfortunate, traumatized, or otherwise endangered children to him. Sighing, he focuses on his quirk, transforming himself back down to his man form so he didn't have any potentially frightening features, and follows the sound. It didn't take long for him to round a corner mostly obscured by overgrown bushes to locate the source of the noise. A young boy was sitting on a mossy log, hugging knees that were pulled to his chest, sniffling and barely holding back sobs. As soon as Raiden stepped more into view, he recognized the kid immediately, and was also immediately confused. He was looking at Endeavor's eldest son, Tuya, also known as Problem Child to Raiden. He had been shown pictures of all of the number two's children except Shudo, though Tuya had more white in his hair than the last time he had seen a picture of him, only the very ends of the messy tufts still holding on to red. What confused him was what the boy was doing way out here. It was at least two miles to Endeavor's estate from here, and that was a long way to walk for an eight-year-old. It takes Tuya a moment to register his presence as Raiden slowly approaches, but when he does he sits up, a flame springing to life around one hand, but he quickly puts it out with a hiss of pain, clutching it to his chest. Who are you? Stay away, the boy yells, and Raiden holds his hands up showing he meant no harm. Easy, kiddo. I'm a pro. Storm beast. I work with your dad sometimes, he says, taking a couple steps closer about four feet between them, and crouching down. What are you doing here, Tuya? You're a long way from home. Tuya sniffs, frowning hard and pulling his knees back up, hugging them tight and looking away, his eyes watering again. Not like it matters. They're all busy fawning over Shudo. Dad barely even looks at me anymore. He huffs, quite a bit of anger and frustration in his voice. Getting up, watching Tuya's icy blue eyes track him, the hero comes closer and sits on the mossy log next to the boy, though there was an easy foot between them. You know, when I work with your dad, he talks about you and your siblings a lot. Granted, sometimes I have to drag it out of him, but you're always on his mind, he hums, smiling sincerely when Tuya gives him a skeptical look. You're right. He probably just talks about how much of a failure I am. He won't even let me train with him anymore, the boy mutters, scrubbing at his eyes. Montu. She's only got time for Shudo, and when she's not taking care of him, she's sleeping. I have to look after Fuyumi and Natsuo. Raiden lets out a low rumbling sound as he exhales, thinking over Tuya's words, tilting his head towards the boy but keeping his eyes forward, watching a couple bees buzz around some flowers that were growing on the other side of the small clearing they were sitting in. He worries about you, he eventually says, smiling when Tuya glares at him, thinking he was messing with him probably. Serious. We were just talking about you on Monday, actually. I'm helping him out with a big, important mission. He's worried that your quirk hurts you, but that you keep trying to train with it. I think he just doesn't know how to tell you that properly. All he does is yell. Tuya retorts, scowling hard at Raiden. He yells and orders me to stop and then he walks away. All he cares about is surpassing all might and, and I could do that. My fire is stronger than his. If he'd just let me try, I can prove to him that I can be stronger. But but no. Shudo is already his little masterpiece, even though his quirk hasn't come in yet. All he cares about is the stupid baby. That stupid baby is your sibling, just as much as Fuyumi and Natsuo are. Raiden says firmly, but not loudly. Tuya flinches anyway, watching him wide-eyed like he expected more volume, or a swinging hand. He didn't know if Endeavor hit his kids, honestly he doubted the man would be honest if he asked, but he knew the reaction of a beleaguered child when he saw it. He recognized much of himself in it. Sighing, he scoots a little closer, reaching out slowly so Tia didn't think he was about to get struck, and rests his hand on the boy's head, 
gently ruffling his two-toned hair for a moment before pulling his hand away. I can't imagine how frustrating it is for you. Your father put so much into you, but your quirk works against you. I bet it's been hard, feeling like you don't have his favor anymore, he hums softly, watching as Tuya's eyes water and the boy sniffs. I dash. I just want him to L look at me again, the eight-year-old whimpers, trying to be tough and not cry again, but a couple tears escape anyway. Listen, I don't know what it's like in your house, but I do know that Endeavor isn't the most emotionally available person. And I know that he loves you, and he loves your siblings, even if he doesn't show it very well. If he shows it at all. He always talks about all of you when I ask, and he's shown me so many pictures on his phone of you and your siblings playing together. Ones I bet you don't even know he ever took. That's how I knew who you were right away. He doesn't act very much like he loves us. He all but ignores Yumi and Natsu, Tuya mutters, though a little light had returned to his eyes. They don't have the right quirk for him. They have mom's quirk. And I have mom's con constitution. He struggles a little with the last word, but perks up a little when Raiden nods to tell him he got it right. Fire and ice just don't mix. Maybe to, maybe you're right. The saying, opposites attract, isn't always true. Raiden replies, rubbing his still aching shoulder lightly. He was sure he was a mess right now too, his clothes and skin scuffed and bruised and dirty, his scalp itchy from dust and rubble falling on him and getting stuck in his thick hair. Tuya notices the rubbing pretty quickly, fully looking at him up and down and tilting his head. You look terrible. Were you in a fight? He asks, and Raiden feels a little stung by the brutal honesty. Though he couldn't deny it. Yeah. It's been a while since I've patrolled my own area, almost two weeks between something that happened last week and then helping your dad out, so the villains in my area have gotten a little bold. The last guy had a pretty nasty strength and size quirk and tossed me around a bit, he hums, though he can't help but smile as a bit of a sparkle comes into Tuya's eyes. Tell me about it. Dad never talks about his fights. I want to be a hero one day, so the more stories I hear, the more I can learn, the boy bursts, bouncing a little in place as he lowers his knees, turning to face Raiden, who was glad to see him revived a little. He wasn't sure telling stories of his heroics was a great idea, not wanting to encourage the boy down a path that would just hurt him. He also wasn't sure if Endeavor would approve of him talking with his son alone like this, but he couldn't exactly leave the kid by himself in a park miles from home. He wasn't even sure how Tuya had gotten here, besides walking all this way. Had he tried to run away from home and gotten scared and stopped? All right. I'll tell you a little about it, he eventually decides, figuring what was the harm? One story wouldn't cause any harm, surely. So, he regales Tuya with the story of his last fight, telling him about how he had gotten there to see the villain ripping the front door off the convenience store to swipe as much of the goods and money as they could. He had grabbed the criminal and used his wings to pull him back and into the street, only to catch an elbow in the jaw that sent him flying. There were too many people for him to use his bigger or area effect attacks, so he had stuck to his close combat techniques, which he called static wings, and beast claws, both of which had several variations like blitz, fivefold, and vicious swipes. He turns the drama up a little when he gets to the part where the villain had tried to overpower him in his half form, which had also been what dislocated his shoulder, which forced him to transform himself a little closer to his full beast form, making himself much larger and stronger, and much more animal-like. It put a strain on his control of himself and his natural electricity generation, but luckily his control now wasn't even comparable to what it had been like even a few years ago. Tuya almost had stars in his eyes as Raiden wraps up the story with the dramatic ending of him taking down the villain with only one arm that was really usable, and he can't help but chuckle a little when the boy pops up off the log, bouncing into the grass a few feet. When I become a hero I want to do all kinds of stuff like that. Saving people and fighting villains, making sure that people are safe and comfortable, he giggles, miming some punches and kicks, blue eyes that were so much like his father's bright and excited. The joy of the child was sharply contrasted by the bandages around his arms and stuck to one cheek with some medical tape evidence of Tuya hurting himself with his quirk as he tried to train it to be stronger, even with his father's disapproval. The desperation to please Endeavor and be accepted by him was heartbreaking to see. Honestly Tuya, I think you have the makings of a fine hero in you. 
Raiden says, smiling as Tuya nearly blinds him with a broad smile, having apparently wanted to hear just that. You need to be careful with your quirk though. If you're too hurt to fight because your own quirk hurt you, then others will be put at risk keeping you safe in a real villain fight. Tuya deflates at this, brow furrowing hard and he kicks a rock in the grass. I don't know what to do about it though, my flames keep getting stronger, but it's like my body gets weaker each time. It can't keep up, he huffs, frowning. Raiden lets out a sympathetic rumbling sound, thinking on this for a moment before getting a stupid, idiotic idea that would probably never work. I can try talking to your dad, see if he'll let me train you. My quirk was pretty nasty when I was your age too. I had very little control over it, and it put myself and people around me at a lot of risk. Maybe I could help you in ways he can't, he hums, having no idea what the hell he was doing. He had enough on his plate with Tenko and hero work. Could he really afford to add training to ya on top of it? He hadn't even started helping Tenko train his quirk yet. The way Tuya's eyes light up at the suggestion though makes him determined to figure it out though. I can't promise anything, I want you to remember that. But I'll at least bring it up with him when I see him next week. Please. Oh I hope he says yes. I want to get stronger and make him proud, more than anything. If, if you can train me so that my quirk doesn't hurt me anymore, maybe he'll start spending time with me again too, the boy bursts, tears of joy springing to his expressive eyes, hope clear in them. From what Endeavor had told him about Tuya's problem with his quirk, and his own reluctance to let the boy continue pursuing the hero path, he doubted the man would say yes but, he had said he'd try. Like I said, no promises. Don't set your heart on it until I get approval from your dad, alright? Now then, how about I take you home? You're pretty far from the estate. How'd you even get out here? Raiden says, standing up and brushing some moss off his pants. Uh, I dunno actually. I was just so mad that I left the house and kept walking until I got here. Tuya mutters, scuffing his feet again, face flushed with embarrassment as Raiden chuckles quietly. Let's not do that again, huh? This park is pretty secluded and anyone could have come across you with not so great intentions. You're lucky it was me, the hero hums, transforming himself to his half-form as he does, watching Tuya's eyes widen with wonder and excitement at the change. Now then, you ever been flying? Uh. Hero Analysis for the Future Volume Number 1, Amended and Revised Hero, Storm Beast Height, Variable Weight, Variable Quirk, Storm Beast. Quirk Type, Transformation Slash Emission Hybrid. Special Move, Static Wings. Covers wings with visible, purple, electricity, allowing strikes to stun opponents. Requires transformation to at least half form to allow for wings and tail growth. Special Move Variation, Static Wings, Blitz. See above. Using enhanced speed and agility allowed by the half or further transformation, as well as close quarters terrain, Storm Beast bounces off of nearby objects, nearly faster than the eye can see, using electricity coated wings to swiftly strike opponent multiple times in a couple seconds. Notes Not useful against other electric type quirks or opponents with speed or vision enhancing quirks. Also poses risk to integrity of wings, risking damage breaking or membrane tears, c. Cutter twins fight notes. Blitz requires specific terrain allowing room for movement and wings, such as narrow streets, forests, or alleyways. Not viable on open terrain because of the needed momentum changes. IS useful for slower, strength-based opponents, or small groups, allowing for multiple strikes on multiple opponents. Oh. I don't want you talking to my son about heroes again. Endeavor huffs to him come Monday, back on the same roof overlooking the same warehouse that Raiden was really starting to think really was abandoned. When Raiden had taken Tuya home, the man hadn't been home, but evidently, Tuya had talked all about their conversation when he had arrived. Cocking an eyebrow at the flaming hero, Raiden frowns when he's glared at. He doesn't need any more ideas put into his head. One would think you'd be more concerned about the fact that he was so upset that he left home and wound up in a park alone, two miles away from home. Like I told him, he's lucky I'm the one who found him instead of some creep rapist, he states tartly, crossing his arms and leveling a look at the other hero. That does concern me, and I already discussed it with Tuya at length. Endeavor retorts, 
and Raiden gets the feeling it had been less of a discussion and more of a shouting match. He was spouting some nonsense about you offering to train him. Tell me you're not that foolish. His quirk is a danger to himself and everyone around him, and I've been trying to make him stop using it before he permanently damages himself. Actually, I am that foolish, you flaming ogre. Raiden snaps in return, a snarl in his voice as his wings jerk with his mounting irritation. That was my first time meeting the boy, and all he could talk about was how all he wants is for you to look at him and be proud of him. Considering my quirk was very dangerous when I was his age, I figured that I could lend him a hand as far as controlling it goes. Endeavor's glare sharpens, his flames blazing a little larger and hotter, but Raiden doesn't back down or shrink away. And what will you do when he burns himself, you, and probably also this other kid you're supposed to be responsible for? He can't handle the heat without burning himself, and when he gets emotional he loses control. Raiden snorts, glaring right back at the other hero. You realize that he's not going to stop, right? He's going to keep training on his own, trying to win back your love since he thinks he's lost it, until he does permanently injure himself. He takes after his father with stubbornness, he barbs, growling low in his chest as they continue their heated stare down with one another. It goes on for several minutes before the number two hero breaks eye contact first, turning away and glaring out over the warehouses below them, his flames settling down. We need to focus on this mission. If you ever speak to Tuya again, do not put any more ideas in his head. My answer is no, the man states, barely controlling his anger, instead choosing to focus on his work rather than the issues surrounding his son. Raiden supposed that was fair, they were trying to get this case resolved by the end of the week. But he was still frustrated with Endeavor and Fortuya.